Emperor has been expecting you. Hi everyone and welcome to One Six Figure Focus and you're very welcome to a kind of a special live stream because I'm going to attempt, attempt being the keyword, a live collection tour. And uh, couldn't do this, literally actually couldn't do this one on my own because I definitely needed some, some support with this. So I have enlisted the Scottish. Ian, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, I'm all good. Looking forward to this. How Saturday nights have changed, eh? Oh, hey, tell me. We're not in our 20s anymore, Ian. <laughs> that's it. And certainly different from last Saturday night, I can assure oh. you. Oh, yeah, right. So, yeah. You recovered anyway. Um, yeah, it took an, an extra day than when I was in my 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear you, I hear you. Uh, but anyway, cheers for joining me. Have a nice uh, hey. mellow Saturday night. And cheers to the people in the chat. Happy Easter weekend. Absolutely. So, um, 25 people uh, watching live at the moment. Thank you very much for joining us. If by chance you are watching us on the replay again, thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. So, just going to address some of the chat here before we uh, get going. A bit of an unusual time for us. We usually stream on a Monday nights at the Hope Show at 8 p.m. Greenwich Me time. But now it's a bit later, a different uh, day. So, uh, yeah, why not? So um, we got very, very early on, we had Malika Mabane, a very, very positive and strong support of the channel. Really do appreciate that. I've, I've seen you in the live, uh, seen you in the live chats multiple times. I've seen you comment on my videos and I really do appreciate that, the curtain encouragement. And I think it was the last, it was one of the premieres I did last week as well, dropped a super chat as well, which is also, uh, don't have to do that, but greatly appreciated. We had our first channel member in the chat here. Well, actually second, technically, because uh, Ian is a channel member as well. We got Tragedy Tales. Thanks very much for being here. Brad Kosky. Uh, Shane, can't wait for your interview you're having. Yo, so that makes two of us. I'm really looking forward to that as well, especially now that I have, uh, um, I suppose, a horse in the race with, uh, I'm chipping away at that uh, payment plan on that Jazz Inc. 1989 Batmobile. Are you, uh, you chipping away, Ian? Hey, I, I, I can't wait. You know the question yeah. I want answered. <laughs> yeah, no, that's been it's been committed to memory. I have a I have a Google Keep there already. I'm a big fan of Google Keep, um, and I've uh, put down some of my thoughts already. I will make sure to ask him about that. Um, so uh, you you're you've got the eighty nine from Jazz Inc on order and payment plan, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ch chipping away, and it's all going good. Yeah, that's all all going good. So I might actually. I'm obviously doing a big kitchen install in four weeks time so I think a couple of months after that I might throw a, a little bit more at it yeah um, yeah just have it maybe paid off a bit before the, yeah I'm, I'm just thinking about that sensitive period of the year i.e Christmas yeah yeah so. absolutely you're you're not wrong so we got a uh, uh, Brad I was about to say Brad Pitt there I'm sure Sure, Brad Kosky wouldn't mind being compared to Brad Pitt. Who wouldn't? But uh, Brad Kosky, uh, excited for ending '89 Batman. Absolutely, Brick Artemis. Man, this sounds fun. It could be fun, or it could be an absolute disaster, Brick. But either way, we're <laughs> going to put a smile on your face. Sunamo, <laughs> Sunamo, oh nine. Let's go. Yeah, you got to have one person saying, uh, "Let's go." Love the intro on the big screen. Ah, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, the um. The animation stuff like that are mine, but the um, the music is not mine. It's a, uh, it's um, it's linked. I, I put a link to that uh, um, in pretty much all the videos. I do believe because uh, it's a copyright free dubstep Imperial March. Speaking of the Empire, we have El Professoro. Uh, we are live, and actually he, this is quite apt because I'll be mentioning an upcoming stream with Mario, aka El Professoro. Uh, this will be interesting. Well, hopefully, hopefully. Set a bar low and you won't be disappointed uh, by this stream, Mario. Um, Universal Key is here as well. Talia Meyer, I believe, from Germany. We have um, uh, Mario saying hello to uh, 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 to Malik and Bain. We got Mike. I nearly skip Mike there. Exclamation mark Mike. Um, it's an interesting one. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Panama. 
Interesting. I don't think I've ever had anyone from Pat. This is one of the things I love about this. Like you could have someone watching from Australia, um, which is a small island off the coast of uh, New Zealand. <laughs> You could have people watching from New Zealand. Uh, no, I, I, I love I love Australians, uh, but I, I I really love uh, Kiwis. Um, you got people watching from, um, from from South Africa or Japan or or from China or wherever. So uh, Panama, you're very welcome. Thanks uh, f- thanks for being here. I do appreciate it absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's always good. That's always good. And we do have. A super chat from a very ge- generous Malik Mabain. Here's for the tour, uh, good brother. Man, I really appreciate that. Again, you do not have to do that. Greatly appreciate I hope. Now I really hope I don't completely mess this up. Okay. Well, if I do, I'm going to have to record it and give you uh, the fort, uh, the collection tour mark four. Uh, we got uh, Colin. Super excited for this one. Hope everyone is doing well. Appreciate that, Colin. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, man, Thanos on the, thro- the throne looks great. Thanos on that throne looks great. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, I see. I'm going to sold you there for a second, Ian. That does well, look great. That's a, a custom bit... throne. Uh, no, it's third party. Um, oh, right. I can't recall who made it, but the first time I seen it was um, Robert Meyer Burnett got it and he did this short video in his garden. And yeah. I, I was like, wow. And it was only like... Oh, and it's it's a beast that looks beautiful, like a hundred dollars, mm. hundred and ten, no, maybe a hundred and twenty dollars, something like that, and it is so mm. worth it. Yeah. That's marked off. Um, I think that's is that based off the one from one of the, is it a Guardians of the Galaxy post credit scene where we first kind of see him, or was it Loki or something? No, it's it's not, it's not that one because that was the floating. Um, uh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one's yeah. actually in artist land, interpretation, based... comic book type thing or something. Yeah, and that's the Infinity War, Thanos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or as you say in Irish, in Ireland, Thanos. There is no Thanos. H's in Ireland. <laughs> Thirty-three, third. <laughs> yeah, Thanos. Some man, Thanos. Yeah, no H's in Ireland, folks. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to get better, though. I'm trying to practice my this, that, these, and those. Thirty-three, Thanos. Okay, so that's my that and saying film, film, film. film. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Valkyrie Magnus, glad to be here from Seattle. I love Seattle because uh, come on, nineties grunge scene. In fairness, like how many, how many, how many awesome bands came out of Seattle? Um, pretty sure. Uh, like okay, I, sh- I used to know a lot more of these, but um, were were I know Soundgarden? They were Seattle, yeah. Uh, were Nirvana Seattle? Uh, yeah. What about um, Pearl Jam? No. Again, there's, there's. Not, I used to be able to list off a bunch of these, but Seattle, a big, big, big rock town, I believe, as well, where Starbucks uh, started. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving Starbucks coffee the seal of approval, but I think they started in Seattle, which is pretty cool. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, feel free to correct me on that. Um, Dart Tamers here. Thanks very much for being here. We got Dilo. One member of the Wolfpack Wednesday over there with Graham and the Jedi Knights. Watch out, Graham, on an episode. <laughs> Look how excited. Look how excited Ian is with his celebratory <laughs> balloons. Dilo. Saturday. Yeah. Uh, this is where the full begins. Easy like. Good stuff. Thanks. Appreciate that, Dilo. Good to see you here. Um, yeah, and Valkyrie. Um, yeah, Seattle. Seattle is the place for the, for the music. Music and Starbucks. Doc Bat. Thanks very much for being here. And then Brad... Uh, Koski as well. So Queen, I can't pronounce it. Queen, Queensrich. I could never pronounce that properly. And Alison Chains. Um, yeah, yeah, Alison Chains. I've listened. I've never actually listened to Queen. Is it Queensrich or Queensrich? I'm, I'm, I'm butchering that. I'm sorry, Brad. Uh, but I have listened to, to Alison Chains. Never, never really got too much into them. But I know it's that part of that grunge scene. Um, we got Brick as well. Um, saluting Dilo, and we got Cylon as well. Thank you very much. We're up to date with the chat. If you are one of the 3,165 people who have subscribed, I do greatly appreciate it. Thanks for your support and help me grow the channel. Um, shout out to our members. We got two different tiers, as usual and as always, pinned in the live chat to this video or, of course, on the memberships tab. We have um, the uh, we have a link to channel memberships. 
So uh, if you want to become a channel member, just simply uh, click on that and, and uh, you can, the rest is fairly straight, straightforward. Okay. So who do we have? We have um, Danny Spotchka. We've got Agent Silverfox, who is here, channel member and panel member. Jose Plus or Jose G. Hernandez. Brian Wong, the man, the myth, the legend. We will always have 800. The Ben Thomas Show, Eddie Money Mendez, caffeinated comic fan. Jim Collector, Lancelot's Nerd Corner, Mugwump, Mike L. or Thrawn's Office, and uh, Ryan Smith. I did ask Mike, did he want me to change his name to Thrawn's Office? So that's his Instagram handle. And he said, no, leave it, leave it as Mike L. So do appreciate that. So, of course, uh, thanks for the heads up there as well. Ian, we got to highlight Just My Toys, which is uh, the newest uh, member in the Commander's tier. And, of course, if you are a member and you're part of the Commander's tier, you get your YouTube handle displayed at the end of all content. Uh, live streams, pre-order previews, release reactions, or videos, reviews, simply like this. Really quickly, new videos on the channel. Just my thoughts on this, um, the three different SKUs of the newly announced Jack Sparrow. I uh, would partic particularly focus on, no pun intended, on the DX39AE. That's the DX39 Artisan Edition, the one with all the, the lambs, wool, rooted um, hair and braids and dreadlocks, which are very impressive. Did you manage to get one of these in? Oh yes, yes. To, almost made a, almost made a mistake though. Or, oh right. Do you care to show, or or is it more of a backstage uh, conversation? Uh, so the story behind it was obviously when I seen this, I was definitely getting it, and Kit posted up two links, and I thought one of the links was the. Deluxe Artisan. I ordered the Deluxe and then shortly afterwards realised I'd made a mistake. Ah, so I, see, I had I to go to Pop Collectibles and mm -hmm. ordered the Artisan and I just cancelled with Kit and put it towards um, that deposit to my reward points um, just so he, he wasn't losing out. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I've done. Unfortunately, with Pop, I had to pay the full lot up front, which wasn't ideal. <laughs> so. I'm guessing it was a bit more expensive than if you'd gone with Sideshow? Or, well, it actually depends. It probably wouldn't be, it, because with delivery and customs... Yeah, so it was 4,780 Hong Kong dollars, I think, mm -hmm. from memory, and that's excluding shipping so mm -hmm. that's about 600 us dollars so it is more mm -hmm. expensive mm -hmm. but when you add on import tax mm -hmm. it, it can it kind of works out the same and have you ordered from pop collectibles before yeah i've i've ordered i've not had any issues and i've got a few other pre-orders with them um right. you know I, I go here there and everywhere now so yeah i know i get you and you know have you like received a figure from pop collectibles what i'm wondering is do you get do you get hit with import charges when you've gone with them or do you not? No import charges at all on any That's order. That's a game changer. That is a game changer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So that be that that six hundred would be you've that and shipping whatever it is, and you hopefully won't get hit with customs. Yeah. So I mean, okay. I'm yeah. I mean, it's it's not cheap, but I'm happy with it. This. Yeah. You know, and that's the artisan one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know a lot of people would have, uh, a lot of people missed out on that jack. I just want to just do one thing here. I think this is worth doing, like especially for people that maybe don't understand the uh, the import charges that we kind of have to pardon to to go through. Um, so the artisan on sideshow is four hundred and. 95 would that be right yeah okay so like yep. i just want to share this really quickly so just give me a second here with this just want to show this for one second <clears throat> so 
I just want to share something. So I just want to share this part window, just this here. Okay, so $495 on Sideshow. Um, Ian, a standard six scale figure costs how much to get to you from Sideshow? Um, well, I've got a few on order with Sideshow just now, but they're Sideshow's own figures. Um, so if we're talking hot toys, what they're about. What was the Inquisitor? That was about two hundred and ninety dollars. Mm -hmm. So, is that what you're classifying no, as I'm a standard? No, I'm asking you, like, figure? say, like, just just the shipping, because I know to Ireland, ah, it's right, about right. fifty dollars just for standard six scale. It's DHL, Sorry. but it's fifty dollars. So, it'd be about forty-five pounds. That's fifty dollars at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's so about fifty dollars. Yeah. Right, so let's say that's what you're talking, but then you're if you go at Sideshow with the U, UK or Scotland, you are guaranteed you'd have to pay customs, wouldn't that be right? Yes. So, so what, it, what, what, what's your percentage? Usually? 20%. Right, so multiply that by 1.2. So it's not going to make too much of a difference going with Pop then, even if you have to pay yeah. $100. dollars you're talking it'll be an extra 46 bucks yeah so it, yeah. it works out pretty similar unfortunately pop it's it wasn't the best price but i didn't want to lose out yeah you yeah, know i get you and like i think about it if you you can't get it on sideshow now because if you weren't in the queue it's it's yeah. waitlisted now anyway so i mean yeah. again like you know that's i think sometimes maybe people might when i go through things like that Maybe people, it might be interpreted that I'm having a bash at Sideshow. I'm absolutely not doing that. Like, I have got from Sideshow before. I've had issues with figures, and their customer service is fantastic. And I really like how they, their wars scheme. I really like how you can go on and play a little search Sideshow game on Halloween and get, like, up to $15 worth of points and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of positive there. It's um, And, of course, they don't make the rules when it's... Uh, they don't determine, like, Scottish import tax rates and stuff like that or irish either so uh yeah so like look that's why um yeah see, that's what see, I see the one thing that I, I don't like shane is that i bought from pop and then when the sideshow event ended they raised their price 10 percent. yeah it's capitalism uh, isn't it yeah i mean it's a hey, supply and demand i get that but you know and did you get in before that yeah yeah. yeah yeah no i get that i get that yeah so um yeah we might we might actually do have a chat about that but i'm just gonna upcoming streams we're gonna be busy so obviously you're watching the hope show you'll be hopefully you'll be watching that on monday so that's two days time at 8 p.m Greenwich me time and we'll cover the news and stuff like that in a lot more depth and if there's any drops or releases in between now and then we'll do that as well uh today we'll maybe touch on captain jack sparrow and pretty much then go into the the live uh tour so kg collections or kg collector he's coming out of retirement here um messaged him during the week and he, he's doing going to do a uh, visions 2.0 he was actually i believe the first person episode one of visions so it'll be interesting to see how his collection has changed and how his collecting habit has changed uh from that interview about two years ago to now so that'll be uh, i think that's coming up on wednesday it's scheduled anyway to check your time and your location then we have Mario, a.k.a. El Professoro, who was in the chat. Hopefully he's still watching, but um, if he's not, uh, he, he'll be uh, doing another Visions reissue or 2.0 um, next Saturday, I believe. So, um, yeah, that's uh, looking forward to that as well. And um, a big one then, Thursday the 11th. Not this Thursday, but Thursday week. We'll have an interview with uh, Yost. That'll be 7 p.m. my time, 8 p.m. Netherlands time or his time. Uh, I think that's 2 p.m. New York or East Coast. And then I think that puts it about 11 a.m. West Coast. So looking forward to that one because um, obviously a lot of the community are hyped about that 1989 Batmobile. People are hyped about the Jedi Starfighter. Um, there's people who have the, the, I don't know, 22 Batmobile or the 1989 Batwing or... I know Ray's uh, Lance Beater and stuff like that. So interesting to pick his brain. I don't own any Jazz Ink in products, but I do have that 1989 Batmobile on order. I'm hyped about it. 
and I want to pick his brain. So, um, yeah, maybe you'll come along and watch that one live if you can, or maybe on the replay if, if, if you can, right? Okay, so I think that brings us up to... Do you want to have a chat about Jack Sparrow before we start doing this live collection tour? Yeah, let's do that. Cool, because I don't think any streams have even mentioned it. It's been very quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's not a popular figure. No, 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 no. Um, gotta say though, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? So this is four hundred ninety-five dollars. There's three SKUs. This is the <clears throat> Hot Toys DX thirty-nine AE AE, standing for Artisan Edition. I do believe the uh, non-artisan deluxe, which is a bit cheaper and more readily available is the DX38. And I want to say the collector edition, the cheaper edition is the DX37. I want to take a look at everything this guy comes with first, really quickly. So you've got um, <clears throat> an incredible likeness, I think. Interchangeable face sculpts with separate rolling eyeballs, genuine leather belts and boots. It's great that they're doing that, but I'm wondering isn't that hat meant to be made out of leather? Why didn't they do that? When they say belts, do they just mean the one that's around his waist? Because you can, there's so many different straps here. I can see one around his waist with a big buckle, and I can see another one kind of around his chest with a big buckle. Is it just one of them, or is it both of them? I'm hoping it's it's for people who are getting this, it's both of them. Two very, very, uh, I don't even think you can call these vintage, but um, just pirate old style uh, handguns which I think look incredible LED light up uh, lantern yeah love that um, you've got a, a dagger with a kind of a is it a sheet is, is that the name for the little dagger holster a sheet it's not a scabbard scabbards for a whole uh, for a sword did I just make that up it's like a sheet no it's something. a sheath yeah yeah sheath um, you got his little uh, is it a telescope is that yes. the way you know that the telescope sweet. yeah yeah, yeah. You got a bottle there um, with the, I think it's, it's the black pearl inside it. Again, I watched these movies once. I did enjoy them, but I'm just not massive into them. Bunch of swap out hands, compass, uh, sword. I presume it's die cast. I think there was some die cast stuff. Like, and then the artisan obviously is that it's it's wool hair implantation for the locks of hair, the braids, and the dreadlocks, which look incredible. And then of course you've got that helm or wooden wheel with that kind of wooden base and water. If this turns out like I think this is one of the most impressive prototypes that I've seen since the Inert Aragorn because that is the most impressive prototype I've ever seen. I'm saying prototype obviously because it is a prototype. Um, but yeah, this is <laughs> this looks incredible. Like, um, what, what what do you think, Ian? I'm gonna flick through these and I'll let you talk there, and you can just give your thoughts on this. I think o overall, um, all three skews of this figure look great. Um, and I would have been happy with any of them, but it's the artisan one. Obviously, it just it just adds to the realism. Um, I agree with you. This is up there with Aragorn, but I might make a controversial statement here. Overall, as a figure, because of the diorama, I think it's better. I think it's better than Aragorn. I think the detail on the ship wheel looks great. Um, so yeah, I can't mm. wait to. I'm a in big fan of, of Johnny Depp, so. Yeah, no, I I get that. I, I I could see why this would give Aragorn Aragorn. They're both prototypes, so it's kind of. You can, okay, they're not the same person, obviously, but in terms of like realism, I think I'd still give Aragorn the edge based on the face sculpt and the hair. But it's very hard to compare them, I think, as well. But you you give you give this figure overall the total package the edge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I okay. do, unless an yeah. add to Aragorn, um, but so far, for me, th the detail that's in this figure is equally as impressive as Aragorn, and Aragorn mm -hmm. blew, blew me away, I thought it was incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. So I just want to flick through uh, some of these images, right, just really... Do you know, do you know what's mind-blowing, like... You know, I, I watched these movies. There's five of them. I watched them all once. I enjoyed them. I enjoyed the kind of earlier ones better than the latter ones. But I think he's the best thing of them. But he's always like doing something. You know, sometimes it's very, very dark. 
and you know i think it's something from my recollection on the ship like there was obviously battles going on and a lot of them were in the dark and i know smoke and there's fire and there's i think stormy weather at some points whatever he's always moving as well like he's just naturally always moving mm -hmm. so with that it's very hard to pinpoint all these little details so all these little things like the little the braid look not just the braids in his chin but the little beads around the braids and the fact that they're not the same the little almost like little and you know, brooches and stuff like that and mm -hmm. beads that are like on his plaits and his dreadlocks the kind of red wraps here on the dreadlock on the right and the white twine around it looks like twine on, on the right all the beads along some of his um his hair and stuff like that the attention to detail is incredible the kind of the texturing and stitching on the this kind of blue piece that he's wearing like over the shirt it's just yeah it's a, it's incredible <sighs> it's the different fabrics and you know, you, you talk about coats and layers. You're the same as me. It just adds to the figure. This is spectacular. This is one of those figures that it's like, you know, someone, someone you're trying to explain this to someone, and they're like, all right, you, you, you collect all, you collect G.I. Joe's. <laughs> and then you then they see this, and they're like, oh, I, I, I did not get that. Yeah, this, like, this looks mind-blowing. Like, do you know? Yeah. Even, like, the, the design on this um not the coat but the kind of the kind of navy blue kind of undergarment he's wearing there just this is a, i think this figure is a celebration put it that way and i, I yeah. I'm, not, I'm not getting it like it's it's not a franchise I, i'm particularly into but it you cannot not appreciate this like <laughs> what i'm curious about is every set of hands got his finger tattoos on them. I've never zoomed in to have a look, but I'm curious. I saw one post um, saying that um, they'd spelt it wrong, like like it was J A K C or something like that. But then on right. some poster, I immediately googled it, and on a poster, it's it is messed up. Right. Like it was the same. I don't know what that is. Like it was definitely there was a poster for. I know. I think it was this movie, or pretty sure it was this movie, and it, the the fingers seem to read J A K C instead of J A C K, which well, go figure. But like people were saying, it's accurate. I don't know what what. Maybe that's right. the way he spelled his name. Who knows? I don't know. But yeah, mm -hmm. strange. Um, but I had no. I had noticed a, a post about it. But then other people saying posts in the some screenshots going no this is actually the way it is so I thought that was kind of interesting I'll flick on through some of these before we move on so you've secured this anyway you went for the the in art uh, yeah the, inert, the, the artisan artisan yeah, artisan I mean look the ship wheel I mean the, the weather and that's on there it's great but I mean like we've said before in Aragon it's this is just all it needs is a pulse yeah you can literally see seeing his on the right here his left eye you can literally see the little red blood vessels in his Oops. eyes yeah <laughs> uh, again it is a prototype but hopefully it uh it makes its way to uh translates into really i want to see if i get a better so better images of that i'll go back to this okay right so what, what's this? You have the helm, which looks incredible. Yeah. What's in the box? I wonder if there's something in the box. I wonder if the box open. You got that uh, kind of wooden, wooden base. Yeah. The box, uh, lantern. This is kind of some like water effect. Yeah. Look, this this looks this looks absolutely incredible. Yeah. I mean, I'd have it displayed on the right. I think the that's that's how I would have it. So like this, or not too much water. Yeah, I prefer oh, you'd the... have it like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just the other way. Yeah, I get you. The other way around. Yeah, I know. I get yeah. you. I get you. I get you. And I think as well, like these photos don't do this justice to how big this this wheel will be. There you go. That's a bit more. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to add to the shipping. I mean, I don't know what the weight will be, but. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's not it's not going to be in art and real wood. So. A lot of people are going to be waiting for the in art version, man. <laughs> yeah. 
I misspoke, man. I misspoke. Um, all right, I think we're ready to start this uh, collection tour. All right, so we'll just get rid of some of these tabs that we don't need. We need less, less tabs here for this one, the better. Okay, so I think there's one thing I would like to share first, though. I'm just going to share one little thing first. Um, so obviously with that Yoast interview coming up, I'm a little bit biased about what I want him to make. So I put this poll up in the community tab and I'd really appreciate if we could get some honest feedback from this. So the question is, if Jazz Inc. were to make the Robocop OCP Detroit cop car, would you pre-order it? Looking for as much honest data as possible. So please vote yes or no. Um, I'm a yes man in this. If he does this and the pre-order goes up and it looks good, the prototype looks good, I, I, I would I would pre-order this. Um, I wouldn't say that about too many vehicles, but uh, so far we got 159 votes and 21% are yes and 79% are no. Um, but look, I'd say he gets bombarded every single day with make this vehicle, make this vehicle, make this vehicle. So uh, look, uh, if uh, you get a chance at some point, maybe vote on that. Whether your answer is yes or no, we want accurate, honest uh, data for the man. I will present this to him. It's not a really strong case at the moment. <laughs> but then again, that's still about 35 people who might potentially uh, potentially buy it. All right. Ready to rock here, so Ian. Let's go. Okay. So how this is going to work is in one moment, we'll probably do this in stages because... Um, I'm going to use my uh, phone, so what you're at the moment you're watching the stream, the, the video is coming to you courtesy of an iPhone. The audio is coming through this uh, HyperX Quadcast microphone. What I'm going to do is just uh, switch the audio to the phone, so then audio and video will be from the phone. Um, you might hear a bit of a drop down in quality, but you should be able to hear me uh, come through. And Ian then is going to manage the chat and stuff like that and draw my attention to any uh, questions or anything like that because I won't be able to see the chat while I'm uh, just kind of doing the tour. So I'll be able to hear Ian and he can like communicate anything to me, any questions, stuff like that, or highlight any comments. Um, and I'll be able to see basically what I'm showing you. And I'll, I'll see if I can keep an eye on stuff as well, but uh, Ian is going to manage the chat here. So, all right. So the first thing, we're going to give you an overview. And then I'm going to give you an overview, overview of the room, first of all. And then I'm going to go through the uh, Bleedens and just show you an overview of the Bleedens. And then I'm going to start off, I have things organized kind of row by row, okay? And I'll just do the bottom row first. And then I'll come back and we'll sit down and have another little chat. And um, yeah, and then we'll continue on. All right, so we should be ready to go. I'm going to switch over now. So... Uh, Audio switching from the mic over to the... So, Ian, can you confirm that you can still see and hear me? Audio's still there. Still see you. The audio's still there. And uh, the yep. audio's probably a bit lower or sounds a bit different. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's correct. A bit, a bit more shallow. All right. Excellent. Shallow's my middle name. All right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Right, so we're going to disconnect this, and I might, I might drop out for a second or two. Alright, so can you still see and hear me, yeah? All good. I don't know what magic this works through connecting the iPhone to the uh, MacBook, because I, I have my Wi-Fi, my data, and my Bluetooth turned off, turned off so maybe it's a I've tied Bluetooth um, that connects the two of them but uh, brilliant okay all right so yeah an overview first of all all right so so we'll turn the lights on for this one okay so this is say the um this is just the the, the back of the door here so that terminator 2 um kind of classic movie poster so then this is just to the left of the door as you walk in. So what you're looking at there is um, a movie poster from The Dark Knight. This was actually gifted to me by a really close friend of mine who actually I went to see The Dark Knight with back in 2008. A guy I went to college with, uh, absolute legend, Paul. 
and he gifted this to me and I had a, it, it wasn't framed it was just rolled up uh, in a kind of a tube and uh, I only actually managed to get it framed and hung up I always said I always I put it up in my, my, my house when I, when I got a house and it was only about I, probably, probably two years ago I managed to do this like and he, he genuinely thought I'd, I'd lost it but this is the infamous Inert Joker uh, I obviously received two copies of the non-smirking head sculpt just want to check if he started smirking nope still the same uh, but I have um, uh, basically contacted Inert and they've uh, Line Rock have got onto it Line Rock have just confirmed there that they want uh, to me to ship it back to them now and it's going to be sorted so a bit of progress it took a year um, but that was uh, not Line Rock's fault it was kind of distributors and stuff like that but I had some positive news there just this morning so I've got to ship that back and it looks like I'll be getting that replacement smirking stuff and of course you have can you still hear me Ian? Yep, here you're good. Brilliant. Good stuff. Let me know if there's uh, if anything uh, messes up there, or if, uh, if there's any shots coming in or anything like that. Thank you. So like, this is the bat pod. Absolutely love this. This is displayed solo at the moment. Possibly we'll have the um, the Anne Hathaway uh, Catwoman, or maybe a one of the versions of the DX19. But then I'll have to move it back up here. Probably a good time to move it from here to here because this uh, motherfucker is going to be headless for a while. So uh, yeah, yeah, good time to start moving it. But absolutely love this. And in, in, fa in fairness, like I know a lot of people, we, we go on about the Inert Joker Route 2 back. It is still an absolutely stunning piece. I absolutely loved it. And hopefully I like it even more when I get that smirking scope. Just a few uh, graphic novels. I don't claim to be a diehard comic book fan. I, my collecting is rooted in my love of film. I did that one right. See that, Ian? Hear that? Hey, um, Shane. But yeah. Gil Gilbert's got a comment. I'm curious to see what you think. I what? wish Jazz Inc. Robocop two Kane. Robocop, F yes. The, Robo so, the Robocop two uh, the the Kane the, the kind of a, the villain from Robocop two. Yeah. You so never know. Um, he he did mention he was doing um vehicle license or sorry, figures. That's one of the things I want to ask him. But uh, yeah, that would be pretty damn epic. We don't get too many of these. So the overview here. So this is um, my floating shelves display. I will go into a bit more detail on these uh, later on. So these are all floating shelves. This is my end game display. They're all end game figures on the top. And then I've got the, the only two quarter scales I use here on floating shelves. Um, I will go through those a bit more in detail later on. This is just an overview. This is just a I recently cleared out the table. I had the quarter scales in the table, but I cleared it out. So it's basically just important stuff like the odd beer bottle and um, the just all the stuff I use for streaming. Hey, Shane. Yep. Brad Kosky saying you should look into getting the bike from the Batman. What's your thoughts on, on that bike? I'm not a fan of that bike, to be honest. I mean, for me, um, yeah, it's a cool looking bike. But for me, it's um, I'd rather invest more into say '89 or the Dark Knight trilogy than the Batman. Even though I really like the movie, I am gonna pick up both versions of the uh, the figure from Hot Toys and uh, In Art. But uh, no, I won't be getting the bike on that one. I actually prefer the Bat Pod because it's just more unique, uh, and unique design. Whereas the the Batman one is cool, but it's and it's slick and stuff. But I just prefer the back pod because it's just uh, very unique. I'm going to try and give you an overview of hey, this. Hey, Shane, yeah. see before you go into the Blue Leadance. Yeah. Mario's got the same opinion as me as the trooper on the window edge. And I have to say, the posing's excellent. The use of space is excellent. And it shows people you don't need a module case or a Blue Leadin or detolf I mean using the space you've got the posing here is excellent I hate I hate blowing smoke up your ass but you know <laughs> but thanks very much I do looks, appreciate that it looks awesome it looks awesome and you know as well like I would have taken a lot of inspiration from like you know the the trooper collectors and the clone collectors in the community I've complimented uh, Mario multiple times on uh, how his Magic case not only are you can see and appreciate every individual figure, but he gives them enough space to breathe. 
Um, and obviously, like, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Jedi Patron's channel, and obviously he's a big uh, clone man, and uh, I, I kind of always like how he sets up his clones and stuff like that as well. You take basically, you know, inspiration from, from uh, many different content creators. We might revisit them later on. So I'm just going to give you an overview on the, the Blalidans. So, so there's seven Blalidans, and they're lit up by the Luke lights. And obviously seven, four spaces. Currently I'm one figure per shelf, so there's 28 spaces. I have them all filled apart from four, because I'm, I was going to fill them up for the collection tour, but I said, no, well, I'm going to leave it the way it is because I'm currently making space for stuff that I have incoming. And um, I think that's kind of an important reality that collectors just need to accept that you're eventually going to run out of space. Um, if you have a job, you're probably only like a week or two weeks or a month away from your next paycheck or discretionary income. But your space is fixed unless you commandeer another room or get a bigger house. That's just the reality. So I think rotating figures is uh, something. So that's the kind of gist of it. So seven IKEA Blalidans lit up by the white tone Luke light kits specific for the Blalidans. They're feeding into a USB hub that you can't see. And uh, then of course this is all on smart plug. So if you see, there's Lando for Steve. Shane, uh, yeah. just one thing I'm looking, Mario's saying to give you the full screen. It doesn't look like I'm, uh, this is working. All right, yeah, yeah, Grand, you, you can, can you, are you able to give me the full screen there or? I can actually do it. Thanks for the heads up, Mario, that's actually. Is that? Second. There we go. That's actually, thanks Mario, I do appreciate that. Okay, is that a bit better? That's much better. Okay, I'll try that again. I, I feel insulted. You don't Why? want my face on the screen? Well, we can hear your voice. <laughs> With subtitles, we can understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, let's face it, the Americans watching us don't have a clue what we're saying, like, because because <laughs> they they think they're watching an episode of Braveheart here or something's like yeah so thanks Mario yeah I should have should have thought of that but look this is why we have you here okay so just for you Mario we're going to start off we're going to go through the bottom shelf which is my OT display okay so I have things arranged in kind of uh rows so the bottom row here is OT and it's People say like your bottom row is your least preferred. I beg to differ. If you have a riser, technically there's no bottom row because they're not on the ground. Second thing as well, the reason I have it in the bottom row is because I want that bezman lit up and it's easier to hide that cable down the bottom than it is to have anywhere else because that cable is a bit thicker for the base. So let's just take a look at some of these before we take a little break before we go to the next part. So obviously, this is my favorite trooper even though i'm a trooper fan and a trooper collector i am fairly boring when it comes to my favorite troopers i like the original trilogy straight up shiny stormtrooper just love the design nothing screams star wars more to me than a, than a trooper i know you obviously vader luke and all that but something so iconic about um a straight up uh just white stormtrooper just looks incredible um just absolutely love it i'm sure that's the reason i went and joined the final first with a, as a tk this uh next one then mostly they're kind of in chronological order you see stormtroopers first before you see ben kenobi there's a few uh it's not entirely in chronological order but ben kenobi love that pose as well one of the things i love about this pose as well is that you don't have to get a ccfl for him because he's about to ignite the lightsaber I really like the way the, the hood kind of sits as well because it was kind of pointy in New Hope from what I can remember. But um, that's a great head sculpt as well. Love this one. It's one of the ones I work backwards. Another figure then, my favourite Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back. And um, I just just something about uh, the X-Wing pilot or of course this, the Snowspeeder pilot. This is a figure that how do I describe this? I love figures that come with a bunch of accessories that you can pose with a bunch of accessories, but don't look like you're just trying to shoehorn all the accessories in. And think about this. You've got that amazingly weathered suit 
The star of the show here is the helmet with the blast shield, so weathered and dirtied up and scratched. The suit itself with the little hose kind of pipe that's coming out of his chest box. You can hang the lightsaber off his belt, have the blaster in the, the holster, and then the kind of device that he uses, the kind of grappling hook as well. I just think this is, this is my figure of the year, I think of last year. Absolutely love the look of that. Of course then, impossible to have an Empire Strikes Back uh, collection without Boba Fett. I say that, but I don't have a Vader. I've got two on the ways. I know that's sacrilegious, like, but time and money, folks. You know the drill. Absolutely love uh, this uh, mysterious looking uh, bounty hunter. Recently got a, did a troop in Dublin Comic Con and met this guy who had the most screen accurate uh, Boba Fett uh, armor I've ever seen. Was lucky enough to have a chat with him and get a photo taken. Absolutely incredible. Um, this is where it kind of gets a bit not following the, um, I suppose, appearance. People were talking hey, about, you know, yep. See, before you go into Bespin, um, yeah. Brad Kosky's asking about, well, he's making a comment about Obi Vader. Um, I don't know, have, have you pre ordered Obi Vader I've got or not? Kenobi Vader, and I've got the Return to Jedi Vader both on right. the order. Yeah, it's okay. Brad it's saying it would look awesome with a CCFL in your display. 100%, yeah, 100%. That's actually a great point. So, this here. I absolutely love this face. I think, I don't know that Hot Toys mess up, but you have two different versions of this, and the regular one came with what I thought was the most interesting base. Not only does the floor light up with that kind of, it's not orange, it's not red, it's that kind of, it's, it's somewhere between red and orange, uh, the color of the, the Bespin base, and then you've got the kind of white lights from the, the generators there. Um, I love the way you can, it's modular as well, you can have the base on its own, or the, the towers on their own or turn them off and on and then pair that up with a CCFL. I think I've done a decent job as well of hiding the wires, particularly in this one, because you can use the base to hide the wires, not just to power the base, but also power the CCFL. I just absolutely love this uh, figure and the way it looks. And the reason I have the OT stuff in the bottom is because I I wanted to pose this one up and hide the wire as best as possible. And if you look, I'm not sure can you can see this, but yeah, you can see it behind, see behind um, Boba Fett, there's a hole. I've actually drilled, using a, a hole saw, I've drilled a hole about, it's probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a half in diameter, I'd say just over an inch in diameter, um, on the the base of all these buildings, just to make it easier to wire, you know, bases like this that have a wire, or uh, CCFLs, or um, fusion reactors, which I'll show you some of them uh, later on as well. Shane, there's no a problem. question, Brad Koski. How high does Shane have his CCFLs? I'm presuming that's, that's the, great, the setting. That's a great question. That is a great question. So, um, I have CCFLs on, obviously, the bottom shelf. I have an Ahsoka here with two CCFLs here on the second shelf. And I have one here on the second shelf as well. Um, I could put them higher. And a little tip when you're ordering CCFLs... Uh, I would ask them to make the cord long enough so you could fit on your top shelf. So measure the top shelf down to the bottom and then maybe add another half meter on for wiring underneath because I made that mistake and didn't do that for all of them. So I'm kind of limited in the sense that I can fit them on the bottom shelf, I can fit them on the second one, I can probably do it on the third one, but I probably wouldn't fit them on the highest shelf, but from future CCFLs I will be asking the, the customizer, R15 Custom, to um, uh, make the cords uh, long enough so I can put them anywhere. That's a great question. Um, Jane, do you have another question? Mar Ma Mario was asking, if you can only display one version of Luke, which version stays in the display? Can you uh, remove Mario from the chat like a good lad there? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that question. I hate everything about it, Mario. I know... But you know what, it's a very real question because I've got 28 spaces here. I'm going to have to start with rotating. Oh, only one. Um, I presume he doesn't mean only one from old trilogy, so I'm not going to be able to keep this on here then. So this looks incredible. This is a figure that I knew I'd like. I didn't realise how much. This is Empire Strikes Back, though. Um, and uh, Mario, I think... While I think this is a better figure, uh, Snowspeeder Luke, I think I would go for this one. 
for numerous reasons. Uh, not only do I like the figure, but I love the base on this one. I love how it looks with the CCFL and the combination. But also, that is, while not the most athletic or intense or skillful fight, I it's my favourite fight in all of Star Wars, him versus Vader in Empire. Now, I think the best fight is Duel of Fates in terms of choreography and how quick it was and how intense it was. Um, but in terms of like what this one meant, him just failing against his own father, I, I just love that scene, how it was shot and just think it was incredible. So I, I think I'd, I hate the question, I hate you for asking it. I love you really, Mario, but I think I'd go Besman Luke. Um, yeah, hope that answered. Uh, Shane, yeah. Mario was the same as you, he's thinking Besman too. Good stuff, great minds, great minds. So, Lando then, uh, this is one for Steve, Evil Sneaker. Um, I know that the guys in the Wolfpack are always on about uh, him getting a Lando. Um, very, very easy, cheap figure. I think it's the cheapest figure I've ever picked up. Got him new for, it was something, I think it was about $120 shipped or something like that. So, um, good head sculpt. Very, very simple, but elegant uh, uh, design. And what I've done hey, is... Sh I've, Shane, yep, <laughs> you might have a challenge on the best look figure. D-Lo is saying... I will not tolerate any snow speeder look slander. Best look ever. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, man. I, I, I agree. It is the best look ever. It's a better look. But if you're just having one, is that going to be a representation? It's 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 a tough one. I think like it look, it's a better figure. And I absolutely love it. It's my favorite figure of 2020. Where are we in now? I think it's a figure of the year for me, 2022. But um, yeah. So look, that's that's stage one. That's the original trilogy. We've just joined us. We're just doing like a, a live collection tour, and that's we've just that stage one, an overview of the collection room, and that is the just the original trilogy row. So I'm gonna just take a little break. I'm gonna reconnect here. I don't want this to. Uh, I don't want the. Basically, the phone to, to die or anything like that. Give me a little bit of a charge here. Flip this around. Shane, there's a couple of good comments I'll, I'll leave for you too. Cool, a minute. A little charge here. Okay, so first of all, thanks very much to Mario for giving us the heads up by putting full screen. So I should have thought of that, I do appreciate that. Um, right, I'm going to switch back to this mic here. Okay, so we've got. Uh, microphone hyper podcast should be back to good audio. Thanks for holding on the floor. I do appreciate that, Ian. Um, first of all, uh, 41 people watching live do appreciate that. Please hit the like if you're enjoying the content. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As usual, there's a link if you want to consider becoming a channel <laughs> member. It's pinned uh, to the it's a it's a pinned comment in the live chat. So, um Sorry, there's, there's a few comments there pinned, is there? Um, yeah. Okay, so... I'll let you take over. <laughs> starred ones, is it? Yeah. Cool. Um, thanks for thanks for uh, holding on the fort, Ian. I do appreciate that. A shout out to Ian, holding on the fort. Um, okay, so I'll flick through some of these. I would love a hot hand and give him the CCFL... Uh, blue looped lightsaber and then have him cut and open one of Ian's tauntauns maybe. oh hey yeah you have them in the back yeah um, can you fit multiple figures in each uh, section just because you can doesn't mean you should um, y you can fit two I think personally one figure per shelf looks the best in my opinion could you fit two? You could, but for me, I think you to be, there's a few things you need to be conscious of. If I was doing that, A, I definitely wouldn't be using any stands. I tend not to use stands anyway. Sometimes I do. Um, we might get into that later on. So definitely not using stands. The figures, it would have to make sense that they're posed together. Like, for example, the Mark VI Iron Man and the Mark I War Machine. They had that famous kill box scene from Iron Man 2. They shared screen time. They both lit up with fusions. That would just look incredible. I've done that before with the details. So you can do it. But I think if you did two per shelf, 
in my setup behind here, it would just look very crowded, to, to be honest. It's possible, but um, I, I think I get bored of it very quickly. Um, so what do you use to keep your figures? No, just wide base, center gravity. I'll give you a perfect example here. It's over my shoulder. See this one here, Mark 47? Wide base for starters, obviously, obviously physics 101, kind of like something with a wide base and a low center of gravity is harder to topple. So yeah, wide base, um, which would uh, also lower the center of, center of gravity in this case as well, and use the ankle articulation so that the feet are flat when possible. And yeah, typically it works. I don't, I've, you know, I've had the odd accident, but nothing serious, um, <coughs> touch wood. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't use any museum gel or blue tack or anything like that. Then again, I don't live in a fault line. Ireland, we don't get we don't get earthquakes. Um, the floorboards here when I'm walking on it don't vibrate and they don't bounce stuff as well. I don't I don't have kids as well, so it kind of that helps as well. But thanks for the question. <coughs> I'll start with the scout the next time. Uh, great trooper. Um We've only seen, we saw an overview, shiny, shiny, and then we saw the, saw the, the, the original trilogy uh, display on the bottom shelf there, so. Um, had to help, uh, happy to help, glad to be a third party uh, director. You are the Christopher Nolan, or the George Lucas of the one six scale world, uh, oh, Professor. Oh, thank you, Mary, do appreciate it. Costa, how are you? Thanks to the 44 people watching live, or if you're watching on the replay. Only one quarter scale Batman got the base treatment because he was misbehaving. <coughs> the ankles on that figure are bad. They are very bad. Uh, for a quarter scale figure, which should be kind of like some of their creme de la creme offerings, ankles are very, very poor in that. I'm on a second floor and everything shakes while walking. Yeah, I, I get that. Okay, we gotta customize um, our experience there. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little sip of beer. How are you doing? You hanging in there, my, my friend? Hey, all good. Still early doors. <clears throat> good stuff. Um, the next next time now, what I'll do is um, I'll go through the second row, which is I really really like the second row. It is in chronological order. Key figures from key episodes, key characters from uh, Mandalorian season one or two. So they're like key figures from key characters. From, like my favorite episodes from Mandalorian 1, one and 2 and they're uh, just organized in order of appearance and I have actually noticed something very strange about the um, one of what I consider one of the best head sculpts Hot have ever done and that was the I'm trying to point to this the um, the Boba, Boba Fett I think like his head is getting slightly grey I think like the paint is getting oxidized I know that that can be an issue it was an issue with the upgraded suit Spider-Man, Tom Holland sculpt, his brown hair was starting to show little uh, parts of grey, it was like he was turning grey, but uh, it's, a, it's a common thing uh, reported from that figure, and I think, it's very subtle, but I think uh, the um, that figure suffers from that as well, still an amazing head sculpt, uh, but, uh, a little bit disappointing, so that'll be the next stage, I'm going to go through that shelf, and then the there's a Marvel shelf here, and it's not complete because there's some spaces, like I said, making space for future figures. The top shelf, um, the the purpose of it is basically, it was basically figures f from my favorite movies. But a lot of them have been moved downstairs into the movie icons display in the Ikea Millsbo. So you have like your T-800 Terminator, your Robocop, um, the In-Art Joker, the DX-19, um, the Mark III, which is absolutely stunning. Um, Mech Test Tony, and then what am I what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting two things that were down there. So, oh, Cable and Deadpool. But the top shelf there, I'm moving things around basically. So um, yeah, <clears throat> I I I knew as soon as I saw Shiny in the chat, and I had said things turning grey, that there was no way that. Uh, that, that that's not that's not very nice, shiny, shiny. He, he knew what I he knew what I knew, knew what I meant. It's the stress of being a co-host. That's what it is. <laughs> um, that's a good question, Stanley. Yeah, I am. Um, 
I don't keep shippers, but I buy these big IKEA drums. I made a video on it, um, but I can't remember the name of these big boxes, but your standard six scale figure without the shipper, you can fit 10 boxes of the art boxes in. So they're all upstairs. So I keep the art boxes. <coughs> Pardon. I keep the plastic around the art box, I keep all the accessories. Figures that I repose regularly, I put the accessories down here in um, a little tackle box like for example the DX19 or the Mandalorian Deluxe there because if I want to repose them regularly and have a lot of uh, stuff I like to keep that stuff there um, but then if it's figures that I'm not going to repose regularly I leave the accessories in the art box up there but yeah art boxes are up in the attic and they're in plastic drums just in case god forbid there's a, a leak or anything like that where do you put your art boxes uh, Ian? Yeah similar to you so I, I destroy all the shipper boxes now um apart from like vehicles like the the tumbler um that's up the loft or the attic um and in my garage i've got um the plastic tubs where i fit all the art boxes in and they're all stacked up um in the garage so mm. That's where I keep those, and my goodness, it's just yeah, it, it's it's worth it. I used to have all the art boxes in the loft, but Lucy is a hoarder, and her loft was just it was too much. Nothing to do with all the You know the what I think I've is got. hilarious? <laughs> oh, Lucy's a hoarder. I'm a collector. I'm very refined. <laughs> Pinky out. I'm a collector. <laughs> but but she's yes. a hoarder that's uh yeah that's interesting you know i only drink the finest red wine <laughs> <laughs> i love that like oh she she's a hoarder but we're collectors yeah, it's, we're it's very refined yeah, yeah it's yeah, definitely yeah. her fault uh, that's that's hilarious <laughs> uh, would you ever say that in her presence because i'd say she'd have uh, multiple very very good um argument and counterpoints well, no, she knows she, she's actually getting better. She really is a hoarder. And mm -hmm. if you see her, she used to have a home office and she's just changed it into a walk-in wardrobe. And, her, and it looks the same to me because it's chaos. She, I like everything clean and tidy or otherwise I get distracted. Lucy is just, she loves mess. So it's odd. So, yeah, it's, 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 and you, you wouldn't, you've met her and you wouldn't think that's who she is, mm -hmm. but it is, so. And you're just, you're just outing her here on the internet for everyone but, to. Well, she, she's in <laughs> Spain, so I get to do that. She can't hear me. <laughs> uh, I'd love if she was watching and chimed in, that'd be hilarious. Um, I'm going to buy a 500 acre ranch just, you, you need to buy Yellowstone. Yeah. That's what, that's you want, Yellowstone. Yeah. So there's been fireworks going off outside my house for like the last like four or five hours. I didn't realize people were that into Easter, but um, I probably just any excuse, probably teenagers or whatever. But um, okay. So I, I think we'll we'll go on to um. Level two and and, and three then. So we'll we'll start that again. So if that's all right, I'm just going to switch the the uh, audio yeah. It's all back. good. We've we've went from um, the ice cream van to fireworks. Oh, yeah, and th this, it's, it's a wild place, it's a so, wild place. Yeah. Hope you should still be able to hear me, but now the audio won't sound as good. Okay, you can still hear me in? Yep, still hear you. When you connect off, the, the audio sounds better when you're doing the, the live show. Oh, and probably because it's, I'm holding yeah. the phone a bit closer, closer. that's what it is. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, so if you're just joining us, what we're doing is we're doing a live collection tour. I've given you kind of an out, an overview of the room, and I'm putting on full screen. Oh, you already put me on some full screen, did you? Good stuff. It's okay. Yeah, thank you. Excellent stuff. So, what we're looking at here now is the second row, right? So you have this is the Mandalorian display. I am not a completionist. I don't have the space, and to be honest, I don't want to have everything either. So what I've done is I've identified figures, basically key characters from key episodes of season one and two and 
Season 2.5, which is Book of Boba Fett. Right, so, or should I say Book of Boba Fett, episodes 5 and 6. Um, so we got the OG Mandalorian, the Durasteel Mandalorian. I love the cobbled together look of this suit. I just, I just can't, I, could, I don't think I'd be able to part with it, to be honest. Just love the way it's thrown together. You've got a short trooper pauldron there in his right uh, shoulder. Uh, not a particularly great pose, just a very straight, kind of straight up and down, just a basic pose, basically. Um, again, actually, this is a simple pose as well. This is the next one. These are kind of orders. So you got, he appeared first. Next, then we have the, this is not the, the, um, whatchamacallit, the chromed up version. This is just the deluxe version, the kind of first best card I did. I had a regular and deluxe version. This is the deluxe version, which came with the two Grogu's and the Hover Pram, a bunch of accessories. So it had the Cantona with some of the best gear. He obviously has his long rifle, he has his uh, blaster, tracking fob, a few detonators, um, whistling birds, flame effect. Uh, just, it's, it's a fantastic figure. I, I know a lot of people have upgraded to the Chrome version and I can't rule that out. I want to hold on to this one. I can't rule that that bringing upgrading this one up to the um, the chrome version, but uh, not a necessity right now. Absolutely love that. Then moving on to this one. Actually, the first time we see this guy, I believe, was the final shot of um, episode one of season two when he's there in the desert after they've defeated that sandworm. And hopefully this will stay in focus, sorry. I love that sculpt. I think the sculpt is getting a little bit grey though, to be honest. Um, maybe you can't see it on camera, but I, I love this, this look for him. I know it's very different and it's very divisive, but I just think that two-pack is much, uh, much crap as people give it. And the fact that it's dropped down price, I still think it's an absolutely amazing uh, two-pack. So uh, this one here. Rosario Dawson's live action appearance in The Mandalorian Season 2 basically compelled me to watch all seven seasons of The Clone Wars just to see what all the fuss is about. And I gotta say, the good episodes of The Clone Wars were absolutely fantastic. Some great Star Wars, some great story arc. Wouldn't go back and watch all seven seasons again, but I would go and watch maybe the key episodes for her story arc or the episodes of Cad Bane and all that Order 66 stuff is fantastic. Um, two CCFLs here. This figure gets a bit of guff as well, but I absolutely love it. Comes to life with the two CCFLs. Just reminds me of her like like an absolute ninja coming out of the fog in that episode, just you know, igniting those lightsabers. Every time I look at this, I hear the lightsabers. Um, I love the fact that it comes with a cloak, and I, I like the way it just kind of fits over there. Very simple pose, but they're ready for action. Of course, you've got the long blade and the shorter blade. As much as I love The Empire Strikes Back, this is my favourite look for Boba Fett. Maybe that's sacrilegious, I can hear Mario probably going, what are you talking about? Like as much as I love The Empire Strikes Back, I love this weathered bat, sorry I want to just turn this off for a second. One second. You still with me? All here. Yeah. And we've, sorry. we've got a special guest in the house. Who's the special we've got guest? We've got Pops Costa's little friend Randall. He's saying that he's loving this tour. Ah, oh, brilliant! I do appreciate that. So this is um, this here. I, I I just I don't know. I love weathering. I love battle damage. I think it adds a bit more character and realism to the figure. And this is one of my favourite poses. It's a very simple pose. Obviously, this is the busted up. Um, Stormtrooper helmet that comes with him. It's a very, very simple pose, nothing to it. I absolutely love this. I just think it's fantastic um, figure and a fantastic two pack. Um, obviously, Empire Strikes Back is my favourite Star Wars movie, but I just love this look for Boba Fett. Okay. Now, here we have a figure which is kind of goes against my triple threat method of collecting where I have to. It, it doesn't, it doesn't. Typically I have to love the character, love the source material and love the version of the character. 
do I love the character Cad Bane? After watching the Clone Wars or after watching the Book of a Fett, even that's at one scene we walked out of the desert, like a Western style, that suspense between him and uh, Cobb Vant, that just sold me on the character. I do love the character. Do I love the source material? Do I look, love the Book of Boba Fett? No, I didn't. But I absolutely love episode five and six in this scene. This just sold me on this figure. This guy, tall figure, comes with a duster. Figures with trench coats just have that bit more presence. Three different interchangeable face plates. Obviously you have the two blasters. Comes with a, is a Toto 360. I don't actually have them posed up. Nice inclusion for the Clone Wars fans. I actually like the hat. I think if the hat was the true size as the Clone Wars, it wouldn't have translated well, to be honest. Worked in the Clone Wars, I don't think it would necessarily work live action, but that's just my opinion on that. And finally, this guy here, this is a figure I got in hand thinking, this is gonna be good, I'm gonna like it. I had no idea how much. The head sculpt is fantastic. The, the, the tunic underneath, the tailoring on the robes and the belt and even the boots, okay, they're pleather, but it was just like, I, it made me want to pose him without that black cloak, but I had to pose him with the black cloak. It just reminds me too much about the, um, of, of that, that scene. It's kind of the look we wanted to see. Now, you look at that now and tell me that those CCFLs are not better than the uh, than what Hot Toys are doing. What Hot Toys are doing, it's a step in the right direction with that um, USB powered USB. That is, uh, give them credit where credit's due. They're moving in the right direction. You don't have to use those batteries. You don't have to deal with those interchangeable lightsaber arms to put in the batteries and all that nonsense. You can just plug it in great, but they still look like a bit of plastic with a little light on it. That That's coming through the camera. I can see it here behind me, like what it looks like on screen. That looks like an actual lightsaber. Fine, the tip doesn't light up. Yes, they are expensive. Um, I, I keep these on 25% brightness or 50. That's currently at 50. There's no need to it. It's too bright at 100. And I only power them on when I have, um, when I'm in the room, either doing content or just in the room, reposing something or just in the room. I won't leave them on when I'm not in the room. I just, I just think the CCFLs look, uh, look incredible. They take the, the collection to new level. What do you think, Ian? Does that look like a? Does it? Can you? You see them talking about when I'm saying it looks like a, a lightsaber, like, or what do you think? Oh like, yeah, yeah, that, that absolutely does. But so typically, when you're in the room, what power setting do you have your CCFLs on? 50, 50. I Just won't put them on hundred. They're simply too bright. It's distractingly bright, and twenty-five. I find I just like to have it at fifty. I like it a little bit bright, but not like twenty-five works too. But I just find fifty is that sweet spot between not like uh, overheating or anything like that, um, but also uh, look in the business like, so yeah, I, I just really like to look at them. Now the thing is, if I come in here and that's melted one day or I have an issue, I'm gonna tell you, I'll go, I'll do a video about it and that'll be that. So um, the, the next, we're just gonna move up here before we take another little break. So this, we're talking about the, the third uh, row from the bottom so it's second row from the top so it's not completed this there's, there's, there's space for seven but I only have five display this is basically a MCU um, and of course I have a lot of my MCU downstairs as well I've got the Tony Stark mech test and the, the Mark 3 down the movie icons display but we'll go through this here before we take another little break this is my favorite uh, Spider-Man it's the only one in my collection at the moment, I have had the upgraded suit Spider-Man, two of them, the Infinity, uh, what's it, the Iron Spider, and the the Oil Change Spider, as I call the battling version. I have sold them because I really want the final swing No Way Home suit, and I want Andrew and Toby and the integrated suit to pose them together, and haven't given up on that yet. Anyway, I just love this. I liked Homecoming. Tom Holland is my favorite Spider-Man. Um, I love this because you have the traditional red and blue Spider-Man suit, so kind of more of a traditional look. I know it's not perfectly comic accurate, but I like the tech suit. You, the layers on this, it has a lot of layers without looking bulky, so you've got that simple navy hoodie. You've got the yellow blazer like you had in the, the, uh, the school. I love the fact that it includes the headphones posed over the, um, uh, the, 
the navy hoodie with the hood up. No need for him to, there's no need to, for him to be wearing a hoodie and a blazer if he's going to school. I just really, really like the bows and then with the, the school bag and the science book because I'm biased because I'm a science teacher. Hey, uh, Shane, then. Yep. just one thing, see, you're Spider-Man, you're yep. almost the same pose as me, oh, almost. I'm a man of taste, I'm a man of taste. I've got the phone in his hand, but yeah, it's... Ah, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome that, figure. That's actually a great touch. But that was the pose that kind of sold me on it. If you remember the promotional images, that was the pose or yeah. the similar pose uh, sold me on getting that figure. So I had to work backwards on it. Very simple pose here as well. Someone was asking about how I maintain them standing up. If you look at them, see how flat the ankles are. This is really good. Like the engineering on the the diecast Hot Toys Iron Man is just exceptional. Um, and if you look at that, the, it has a really good uh, amount of ankle pivot, which allows me to have the feet not only wide but flat. So more contact, less chance of them toppling. Like assuming that you, you know that the stance is wide, the base is low, and uh, if the feet are flat, then hopefully you don't have weak ankles or anything like that, because there's a few figures that have a weak ankles. Um, but yeah, I really like that pose as well. Um, this is my favorite Iron Man. I just, I just love the Mark VI. Comes with a bunch of, uh, well, a bunch of different swap out accessories and stuff. Not, I don't have them here now, but I've opted for the battle damaged eyes. Our face plate and the battle damage chest plate. Um, just love it. I think I'm always going to gravitate towards the likes of the Mark 7, the Mark 3, the Mark 6, the guy in the suit look. And I think this is the perfect blend of has a traditional gold and red look, but I love the rectangular arc. Um, absolutely love this. Can't rule out getting the new one, but this one's going nowhere. And of course, this is a uh, fusion reactors. And if you look, yes, you can see a wire. Well, yeah, you can see the wire there. It's such a thin wire. But what I like about the Blalidens is, as soon as you put that to the corner, it disappears because it's camouflaged down along this back right-hand corner. You can't see it because it's, it's just camouflaged in. I have a little bit of a black tape. And then down the bottom and, and out the, you see, you should be able to see the hole there behind Luke which it's hard to see the cable, which is great. So you can see a little bit there, and that's just something you're gonna to have to live with, or if you wanted to put a bigger base there, might hide it like I did with Luke. Hey Shane, um, quick yeah. question for you. No you've, you've been asked, do you have any issues with dust? To be honest, I don't. I don't know, okay, I don't live in a desert. Um, Ireland's climate is like, it's a cool, temperate climate, so it doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. It's not a particularly a country known for its dust. Like I lived in Abu Dhabi for two years, and you literally couldn't keep the place clean because no matter what you did, if you were dusting or vacuum the next day, it'd be just sand and micro dust to be everywhere. So yeah, there's a, a normal amount of dust might build up from time to time, but I don't. I mean, these cabinets look clean, but I haven't cleaned them since I got them. Um, I installed these Christmas, so. In three months I haven't wiped the front of them or dusted inside. So maybe every six months I'll take stuff out, repose some figures, uh, you know, reconfigure the setup and then uh, do a bit of do a little bit of dusting, but it's never like a heap of dust. I think that more comes down to the fact that the country I live in, the area I live in, and um, it's a new house as well, which 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 does help as well. So dust is just um, combinations of dead skin and um, kind of microfibers from clothing and stuff so I presume over time the house will get progressively dustier it's just a case of keeping it off so no it's not something I worry about really I haven't dust proofed the Blalidens but um, yeah once every I'd say once every six months maybe take everything out give everything a bit of a clean down with a bit of Windex and it allows you to repose the figures you want to repose and maybe reconfigure the setup um, I think this is this is it's such a simple pose again no stands um, I was asked about this when I put up a short about it. No stand, just um, just again using gravity. Like if I now if I kick down a bit, you probably see them rocking a bit the the flexible arms. But what I've done is I've uh, obviously a wide stance. Tried to have the feet as flat as possible. 
and I'm not perfectly flat. You can see a bit of a gap there, I think, on his, on his left foot, but feet flat, a bit of a wider stance, find the pose you want, and then I've used the tentacles to counterbalance. He wanted to fall backwards, so I just pulled the one or two of those two tentacles forwards to counterbalance it, and none of those tentacles are None of those tentacles are pressing off the bottom glass, the top glass or the side. That's freestanding. And it's just a, a bit of a, a bit of manipulation. I absolutely, I, I, I love that pose. I, I just really like it. And I've even like something, I find like having the four different jaws um, at random angles kind of gives it a bit more realism as well. So they're not all the exact same kind of angles. So that's where I'm gonna take a little break now before we continue on with the, the top shelf, and then the troopers will be the next stage. Stick around, Mario. How are you doing, Ian? You're hanging in there. Yeah, it's all good. We've got some highlighted comments I'll leave for you. Transfer back. All right, one second. Put this on there. Okay. Thanks for holding on the fort. I do appreciate it. It's okay. okay. You, you'll get my fee in the post. <laughs> I want to get those DVDs I ordered off you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, switch back. This is actually working out all right then. I think um, I think everything thought of everything apart from obviously I didn't have it full screen, but thanks to Mario just going uh, gives the heads up on that. It worked a lot better, so I do appreciate that, Mario. And we're back. You should be able to hear me a bit better now. So. Yeah, thanks for holding on the fort. I'll address some of these, some of these the star chats. Is it? So uh, yeah. Um, this is a great question. Do you display all your figures? Great question, Stanley. Um, the I actually have. I'm a. I keep banging on about this bloody app. I'm not sponsored by Google Keep. It's not. It's nothing particularly fancy. It's just a free. In the Google Suite, you know, when you have your Gmail, you've access to Google Drive and a bunch of other stuff, Google Sheets or whatever. It's one of their free apps. It's just a list making app. It's great for like to-do lists or shopping lists or pre-order lists. Um, and I have a little list called the undisplayed. And at the moment, the only figure that I own, two figures that I own that are undisplayed is the Batman, the Hot Toys Batman 2.0. I got a matte version of that. I reviewed it. I think it's a fucking ridiculous figure. It's awful. Um, I, I can't talk about this without going on a little side tangent. So the original bosses, our bodies were glossy. The cowl looks like a pigeon. The mouth plates are like extra ridiculous. I know Christian Bale did make some ridiculous phases in the cowl, but the mouth plates are just ridiculous. Uh, the cape is completely brutal. Uh, and that's just a few things off the top of my head. So why did I get it? Because I want to do like a Dean Knight in it or a Alan, aka the Six Scale Gallery on it. Please check out Alan, the Six Scale Gallery's latest video on on um on his youtube he's got a dean tolliver head sculpt i think it's apartment 347 357 painted it i think it's an ot customs uh um uh, cape and he has the hot toys 2.0 but he has a map body so i've got the map body the ot customs cape and i'm waiting on the jackson shoe head sculpt and i've got a base very very kindly gifted to me <coughs> from this man here um this our Scottish hero, aka Agent Silver Fox. So I'm waiting for Jackson Shoe. That's why that isn't displayed. Second one is the battle damaged. Um, the battle damaged. Uh, I'm losing my trend. Uh, BVS the Batman battle damaged armored Batman. I had the Justice League Superman. I sold it. I ordered the BVS in art Superman. So I'm waiting to get him in hand to pose them together but yeah so there's two figures that i could put into these slots but i have other plans for these slots so <coughs> pardon me sorry uh, great question stanley uh brad i do appreciate that compliment thank you i wouldn't consider myself uh, a particularly great poser or anything like that um but uh i i, I do try <clears throat> i use the tacky stuff for no base if it gives you yeah that that's a good idea is do you use is that blue tech or museum gel i've heard museum gel is very very good has a good hold and doesn't leave any marks and is easy to get off <clears throat> and one second uh, so 
We got Jose here. Thanks very much for being here. And Figurecraft Philly, uh, loving the Duran Duran uh, shirt as well. Good stuff. You're getting compliments on the music. Excellent. You love to see it. You guys must be tired. Uh, no. Only half twelve. That's not bad. That's not bad. This man here was on LWO all night about <laughs> a month ago. Um, can we get uh, Ian to do a live collection tour or two? What's your setup like, uh, Ian? Your your how do you stream? What 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 do you mean, Clarity? Like, uh, how do you say we, you're using that mic? But what or what are we? Your video setup is that like a webcam? Yeah, I've got a webcam. I could set up my iPhone, and then I've got a Sony mirrorless camera I could use as well. So mm -hmm. I've got the Com Link, but I've not. Yeah. I've not well, used it yet to do it, but I could do. We could do something yeah. on it. On well, your show or you, something. If you want to like, um, if you want to look into that, and then maybe another Saturday we'll do a full live stream. On uh, we'll, I'll do the opposite. So we'll, I'll, I'll be the guy in the chair, and you can go and do the the stream. Yeah. Does that sound like something you'd be up for? So, absolutely, we can we can do that. Excellent stuff. Yeah. Excellent stuff. I'm waiting and hoping Inner does a legit lap begins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of us are. Are waiting on that and it is getting expensive you're you're not uh you're not wrong saw duran duran last october they were amazing good stuff <clears throat> how's the red wine going down ian it's all good 19 crimes australian it's not new zealand but you know <laughs> the aussies make some good wine ah yeah what's wrong with that um so i've seen just looking at the Mario's insisting on the scout trip. He's going back through some of the comments here. <laughs> Micah loving the Cad Bane. Um, I wish I could display my figures, but my wife won't let. Uh, though it's okay for her to display. <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, I will show you the scout trooper. I love the way you're saying, show me the scout trooper, but you have the scout trooper. <laughs> you can probably just turn and go, you see it there. But yeah, I haven't forgotten about the scout trooper. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying about the Spidey he pops. Yeah, it's just something like there's no business for him to be wearing the, the hoodie and the yellow blazer. It just looks great. It just looks very visual. Um, is there any color transfer from the Spider-Man mask to the blue hoodie? Or... Great question. I'll probably never know the answer because I've never taken it out of that pose. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss and I am the ignorant one. Um, I haven't actually checked. Maybe the next time I repose, I'll do a little bit of a check, but I, I think that'll be just one that's kind of a set and forget uh, for me, whereas some figures I will repose, but uh, that's a set and forget. We got Philly here, had the the uh, privilege of streaming with this man, um, was it last week on Ben Thomas show, I think it was? Uh, happy Saturday, y'all. Uh, thanks for sharing live, Shane. Looks amazing, clean. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, did you see Dune, um, Philly? Uh, I think you were, you were about to see Dune uh, the last time we spoke. Uh, really like John Cena figures, especially the ones next to the War Machine and Doc Ock and Peacemaker. Look <laughs> right. You can't see me. That's funny. There's nothing. There's nothing uh, next to those figures. So he's, he's talking about the whole John Cena. You can't see me thing. Ah, shiny. All right, so I think we're kind of kind of up to date here. So, t -t 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 -t. I want to be the guy in the chair too. <laughs> I think Ian is doing a great job. <clears throat> uh, he has it, but he likes seeing it. Did you get the churro? No, the churro was with the um. That was the Parks one, wasn't it? I think it was a Disney Parks yeah. exclusive one. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. I think we'll go into the last section here. i got to show the Scout Trooper to Mario, even though he has it in his collection. Uh, top Shelf won't take us too long because there's only five at the moment because, like I said, I'm making space. 
uh, we'll go through some of the troopers and then I'll finish up with the floating shelves today. We might actually do that all in one, if that makes sense. Sound good? So Shane, the, the species you've got in the Blyleden, have you got ideas from your pre-orders which ones are going where? Not in set in stone. I'll tell you what it was. When I stripped out the figures for the movie icons display, there were some heavy hitters there. There was a DX19, the purple coat rooted in our Joker. Uh, originally then I wanted a Spider-Man and an Iron Man, so it was the Spider-Man here and the Mark 47. There's a T-800 from the police uh, shootout scene from Terminator 1. There was the Robocop and then there was Cable and Deadpool. That was the display for the last month or two down there and I was like, you know what? I want to change it up a bit. So I put these two back here and what was here was Mech Test Tony and the Mark III. So they're down there now. They're, they're heavy hitters like. Mm. So I don't know exactly what's going to go in those four spaces but I know that I'm going to need space over the next few months I do know that I want when the DX the sorry the Keaton 2.0 arrives he is the Batman I want down in the movie icons display until the Jazz Inc 89 arrives I want when people walk in, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, that is Batman and Joker. Because if they're my age, they're like, that is the Batman and Joker. The idea of the movie icons is that, like, I'm in that room more than I'm in this room, really, because I'm watching TV down there. And I like to just throw an eye up to them and see them. And I like that no matter who you are coming into the house, you'd be like, okay, that's Batman, that's Joker, that's Iron Man, that's Terminator, just movie icons, it's Wolverine or whatever. So the spaces I have available here, Wolverine... 1979 would probably go in the uh, the Marvel row here fill up one of these spaces here but he could also go down and take a space in the movie icons mm -hmm. display which means one of them would come back up here and that's fine too um, but I do know that the, the Keaton Batman he'll probably arrive within the next few months and then I probably won't get the Jazz Inc. 89 Batmobile for 6 months to 9 months after that but when he arrives, him and Nicholson are going downstairs and the the DX-19 and the Inert Joker are coming back up. Do you get me? Yeah. So, like, I don't know exactly what's going to go where, but I have, like, I'm, I'm kind of mulling over options in my head. Um, so, let me ask, on. where is go Bane on. going? Glad you asked. That ties in perfectly. That's a perfect segue. Because Bane is top shelf material. Like, for top shelf, but it's funny, like, if you saw this a month ago, it was all, like, it was basically um, DX-19, Root with Purple Coat Joker, uh, Boat Terminator figures, the Robocop figure, you know, the Peaky Blinders figure. So it was all, like, yeah, this is, this is Shane's favorite stuff. But then when I took them out for the movie icons, it kind of almost created gaps up here and weakened mm -hmm. it a little bit. Um, so Bane, it would make perfect perfect sense that when Bane and Keaton, they'll probably arrive within a few months of each other. Keaton goes downstairs with Nicholson. DX19 and Purple Coat Joker come up here and Bane naturally would be posed in the row with them. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm making, yep. say, two spaces here and two, because I know that there's going to be some changes coming. Like, you I mean, that kind of, it's, 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 it's Tetris. It's uh, figure Tetris. Who else do I have coming? This is this is one now. I haven't ordered the integrated suit Spider-Man, but I know that that's one I'll probably get cheap, like because I don't want the deluxe. I want the regular Toby, the regular Andrew, the regular integrated. I'm probably going to have them in the same shelf. I just mm. want them shooting the shit. That I, that's something I've been talking about for ages. And if I don't like it, then I'll try something different. They're not going to get a shelf at all. I want them having a chat. Maybe it's yeah. on a floating shelf here. It would make sense, like maybe even to uh, the way I, you see the end game display here on one side. Maybe it might make sense to do something like similar with the No Way Home, um, something like that. But I'll try putting the three in the world shelf because I think that they're you know they're not bulky figures. They're not mm -hmm. mechanized figures. I'm not going to use the uh, the stands on them. 
and having them like talking together do some sort of a meme pose that might actually work um i'd have to but like i could put it in the shelf and go no this isn't working this is too much no i don't like that um which could happen as well <clears throat> but um yeah um what else say so, yeah, i mentioned the 1979 i mentioned the uh, now it's going to get interesting then when I get two versions of the inner, inner or sorry, two versions of the the Batman, because that could be a case of weigh up the pros and cons and sell one on, or where do I put them? Because if there's a Batman downstairs, I don't want to have two Batmans downstairs, you know. So that could, mm. The inner, more than likely, the the, the rooted single uh, inner probably top shelf as well, do you know. Yeah, but there, it, it's it'll be Tetris. Some some things might have to be uh, rotated boxed up for a while and stuff like that 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 may happen like so uh so do we have anything i'm hoping the jazz ink 89 has some color use use is that like um the iridescent paint i think there is um you did talk about that right yeah did it, talk yeah about... it, it, it does that was one of the things in the prototype images and one of the things in the description that the paint isn't just a flat matte black it's iridescent so there is uh i think it will catch the light a bit i was surprised to see the troopers on the windowsill earlier is that a temporary setup to be honest how that started was i was reposing everything and i just put them up there and just randomly threw them up there and i was like that actually doesn't look too bad and then i Put a bit more effort into spacing them out and how I wanted them posed and who I wanted next to who. And I was like, I actually really like it. I didn't think I would, but I really, really do. Um, there is another option though. You can get these little, they're kind of thinner shelves that I could have here in the corner, and that would look pretty cool as well. And like in like a V underneath the floating shelves. But um, that's an option. That's an option. I missed that bane. Nah, man, you would. You, you haven't missed that bane. If you're, if you, if you, if you go to Hong Kong to a yeah. uh, Hong Kong uh, reseller you will get that you will get that um, yeah the integrated suit uh, that's it's it's definitely in the bargain bin or if, if it's, uh, it's it's one bargain bin material I think like just it doesn't I, I really be... like that suit I'll be honest I've, yeah I like it too I like it too yeah it's really it pops it's really cool mm, yeah I, I liked it too and didn't he um that's the suit he had that fight with uh, the hobgoblin in in the yeah. apartment. So that's a pretty, and yep. it's how he finished out the movie as well. So there were two like really iconic fights. I actually was a bit shocked by how violent No Way Home was, considering I know like it could be considered a kind of a cookie cutter type of uh, yeah. movie. But I I actually surprised by how violent it was. Like uh, so, I actually quite quite obviously I I love that movie. I think it's great. All right. We go through the next section of this. I'm going to show Mario the Scout Trooper because I don't want him to be upset. And then we'll go on to the top shelf. There's only five in the top shelf currently because there's a bit of space. And we'll take a look at the troopers and then take a little break and then we'll finish up with the floating shelves and then we'll call it a day after that. So, all right. So, switching back to the microphone. And if you want to put me full screen, if you wouldn't mind, Ian, and keeping an eye on the the chat that'd be greatly appreciated so mike switched all right okay okay all right so this is the scout trooper this is especially for mario i actually find this trooper quite tall and I've said before, if times, if the time comes where I have to downsize, I've said before, I'll say it again, as much as I love Troopers, Troopers will probably be the first ones to go, but the original trilogy Troopers will go nowhere. Um, yeah, who doesn't love a Scout Trooper, right? Yeah, so, it's uh, an awesome Keith, figure. Yeah. It. Keith, the six scale Padawan, or known as Dublin's Devil now, um, he has a he's enough joined the five and first the Irish Legion as well. So we get the troop together now, and he has a he is a, this particular kit. He doesn't have the rifle, but I'd say it's only a matter of time before he gets the rifle. He's got the smaller gun. I love the way that you can put the uh, the smaller gun on the holster here. 
and even on the shoulders here there's kind of hints of uh, green and it's definitely not the same as the um, the Mandalorian one is more of a sandy kind of weathering on it hey yeah, Shane okay. yep. we've got a special request for a close up Mike Fael is asking don't forget to give us a close up of that beer you're drinking yeah we can do that we can do that okay so so this is Rye River Upstream Pale Ale it's a very very nice crispy pale ale this is made in Ireland and uh, I'll get the where is the description this is Prime TV here folks so there was a nice description I read there where is it it was uh, here we go it was Oh no, there it is. It's amber, golden, citrus fruits and tropical use. It's kind of citrusy uh, type of a, 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 a flavour. It's quite nice. Quite nice. Very easy to drink. And just for everybody watching, this is not sponsored by Rye River. But Rye River, but if Rye you're River watching, watching, reach out. <laughs> okay, so working backwards, this, the top shelf, the logic for display here is that uh, currently you have OT. And then you have Mandalorian key figures from key episodes. And then the next one, this is MCU. And the top one was basically, I had these as my, um, basically my favorite figures for my favorite movies. But that has obviously changed because I've taken a lot of them and, and put them downstairs in the uh, display downstairs because I spend more time actually downstairs and seeing them. So it makes perfect sense. This figure here though, this figure is destined for the mills boat downstairs. Uh, the DX-08, one that I chased patiently, probably for, I'd say actively for about three or four years. Just kept looking at uh, groups and stuff like that on eBay and eventually found one which was like, okay, that price is over retail, but not ridiculous. Uh, when I got it, it was good as new. All the different accessories, nothing broken, nothing damaged, nothing worn, didn't smell of smoke. Uh, fantastic figure, can't f fault it. The head sculpt's amazing, the tailoring's amazing. It comes with so many accessories. You have the gun with the flag, you have the, the kind of, I suppose, the acid flower, um, his megaphone there, his, uh, what's that kind of like, a, kind of walkie talkie that he has in his left hand there. Comes with a cane, uh, comes with the the false teeth and stuff like that like it's and that this is going to be put downstairs next to the uh, the Batman um, 2.0 <laughs> this this is a figure I never thought I'd own I, I know Ian is probably sick of hearing this story and maybe people watching are but I have to tell this story because it's such a it is a very 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 positive uh, story um, when this figure where I first went up for pre-order, it didn't look like this. It had, uh, the body was not, didn't look anything like uh, John Cena. I would argue the likeness wasn't like John Cena. The helmets weren't chrome like they're supposed to be. The body type, as in the shoulders, the chest, the arms, they were not uh, big enough. They weren't the right uh, physique. The biggest thing was probably that the the joints, uh, there was joints in the arms and they weren't seamless. And I was on a live stream and I said, well, maybe, maybe Hot Toys will actually see this and they will change it. And Joao, AKA Big Brother said, uh, typed into the, the chat of the live stream, if Hot Toys do this, Hot Toys will never do this. If they do this, I will buy you a pacemaker. And the man, even though I thought that was just a joke, and I said he didn't have to do that multiple times because we're you know, part of a group chat and we are friends and we stream together. He wouldn't take no for an answer, man of his word. And just so I got this courtesy of um, uh, Big Brother's Wonderland, uh, aka Joao or Big Brother, who uh, very, very generously and kindly uh, sent me this figure. Um, I am not a big fan of the DCEU, I've made no secret about it, but I did see James Gunn's Suicide Squad and was pleasantly su surprised by how much I loved it didn't hurt that Idris Elba was, was in it and because I just think it's fantastic and uh, how good John Cena was in the role and then I went and watched The Peacemaker and just thought this is this is brilliant like this is hilarious he's taken me from knowing nothing about this character and thinking he was 
a bit of an asshole. It's a really caring about the character. Um, action, humor, uh, even how John Cena promoted the um, pacemaker by <laughs> going around like wearing the gear when he was interviewed and stuff like this. This figure is fantastic. Like the, the likeness is there. The magnetic tongue, like you don't need it, but when you install it, it's very hard to not pose him with it. Um, you've got, of course, his peacemaker gun with the silencer. Yes, you can take it out. No, I haven't done it yet. The cartridges on the belt, the, the physique, the, the seamless arms. It's, I just think this is an absolute win. So, shout out to Big Breda and anyone who, uh, who likes this particular figure. It's, 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 uh, it's amazing. These are figures that they are not inert, they are not um, hot toys, they're made by a company which has now gone under called Big Chief Studios. They did a lot of um, James Bond figures and they did Doctor Who figures and they did two Peaky Blinders figures. Um, big fan of Peaky Blinders, think it's one of the best shows on TVs and that came out of, that's been on TV in the last few years and in fair, fairness there's a lot of quality TV. Um, I'd be lying if I told you that these were the greatest head scopes ever. They're not. Uh, this is uh, Arthur Shelby. And then this is Tommy Shelby or Killian Murphy. They're not the best scopes ever. They're, I can see the likeness of both of these actors and characters here. However, they're a bit, a bit soft and plasticky. However, the figures, the tailoring is very, very nice. It comes with a bunch of accessories. like. Two different hats for each of them the plastic versions which are magnetic or you can get a magnetic hair piece if you want to pose without the uh baker boy or um you know paddy caps whatever you want to call them the cigarette bunch of different cigarettes the non-lit cigarette the lit cigarette the smoke effect is something i never thought i'd use i thought it'd be tacky but i actually quite like it you have a, a gin bottle which is not here um, a bunch of different guns and knives little uh, gin or whiskey tumbler like a little brooch and uh, I think it's like a, a watch on his um, on his waistcoat there because he's got obviously a shirt, his his tie, the waistcoat. And the best thing about it is, um, one of the best things about it is they did two versions: the regular versions or the signature versions. And the signature versions are come with this very very nice um, kind of a metal plaque, and that's actually Killian Murphy's signature. So. I mean, if you look at this this guy, he's one of our own. He's from Cork. He's a great actor. Whether it's in 28 Days Later, or in Inception, or as the Scarecrow, or now in in, in Oppenheimer, I think it's a very very nice thing to have um, a, an autograph from not only an Oscar winner but a a someone from your own country who's done very well for himself from and has been in some of the your favorite my own personal favorite movies and TV shows. So. Shout out to Killian Murphy, I think he fully deserved that. And uh, the same here as well, Paul Anderson as Arthur, who plays an absolute head case. Um, equally, sculpt is good, but definitely not the best sculpt I've ever seen. The big chief, they kind of, they get the likeness, but they don't put enough detail in, so they end up looking soft. Um, the tailoring is quite good. And again, a bunch of accessories, whether it's the gun that you can see put under the holster. But yeah, absolutely love them. And finally, for the, the Leedens, the DX13. The DX13, which is a figure that I, again, like the DX08 Joker. I searched for for years. I was patient and picked it up for $400 shipped. It had never been unboxed, and thankfully, it didn't uh, wither away to pieces because it's not leather, it's pleather. Um, heavily battle-damaged sculpt. Come with two different sculpts, a bunch of weaponry. So you have the grenade launcher, you have the pistol, you have, like, like a machine gun, I think a shotgun as well, I can't even remember. <clears throat> um, now one thing I did notice was that the belt here, the, it actually, the belt is infamous for peeling and mine has started to peel, but I already, before I ordered this, <coughs> before I got it delivered, I already ordered a custom one off uh, an eBay seller. Cost me $40, mind you, but um, I have that there for when this falls apart, but look, it's, it is one of the greatest movies ever made, and uh, I'm really delighted to finally have this one. I hate this pose though. I need to uh, redo this and make it look. I don't. Even, I'm not getting the benefit out of this figure with this uh, god awful pose. Um, but I do have the the light kit, courtesy of Hendra Fusion Reactors, to light up the eye, which is a simple touch, but 
does look fantastic. <coughs> you still with me, Ian? Yep, still here. All good. I might just do... <coughs> I'm coughing here a bit like uh, some talking shite. Um, I'll go through the troopers and then I'll take another little break. It's an interesting comment here from Mike. Um, that's the beauty of any battle damaged figure. If the costume degrades, it just adds to the battle damage. Um, it yeah, it, 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 yes and no. I get what he's saying. Mm. It'll make it harder to see. Like I know if you have a rake of bullet holes in, in the back of a, a pleather uh, outfit, it's better if it's on a battle damaged figure than say, um, like sorry, I'll start that sentence again. If you have a clean version and you have a pleather jacket and a battle damage version and a pleather jacket you'll get away with it more obviously in the battle damage figure you're you're right about that but you you it, you'll start to see the difference between the battle damage that's supposed to be there and then the pleather and i know for me it'll, it'll start to annoy me then a bit so when you have companies like present toys who've just announced their t800 terminator from terminator one and it has a real genuine leather jacket. You do be looking at Hot Toys going, lads, what's the story? Um, especially how they've done a 1979 Wolverine with a genuine leather jacket, which, you know, that should be par for the course now. And that wasn't even an art design or anything. So, um, um, Shane, I've got yeah. a question for you since you're, you're on your trooper's shelf here. Yeah. So you, you display your figures very clean and it looks stunning and this equally looks stunning do you think that to complement your one figure per shelf that you could have a display case that like a module case or something that you would display multiple on one shelf um I, yeah like as in I, I do think this would like would look nice in a, in a module case but at the moment, I'm not ready. In order for me to do that, I'll need to get a Maju case. And I'm not ready to abandon the one figure per shelf look. Yes, does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Now, the, I obviously am in the process of getting a Maju case. I have been for the last few months, but they're to a dual function. I'll just actually show you this. So if you look at the bottom here, this here, I've got a lot of questions about what this is. I got this from a company called Vida XL. It's a 260 centimeter long TV stand and the LED uh, uh, function was built into it. You get the LED strips and the controllers for them. And uh, I obviously got this because I have a, it's long enough that I can fit the seven the leadings on it. Now while I like it and it's doing its job, I just feel like it's not supported enough. If you look at the very bottom of it, the uh, the foot of it is actually skinnier. Like if, if, if you look at here, like the foot of it is a bit skinnier. So the, the weight of the seven Blalidans is resting on this and then the foot is a bit skinnier. So it's not the most sturdiest thing and I don't like that. So it looks well, but it's not that practical. So that's why I'm getting the module cases, not only to serve as risers that are a lot more sturdy, because that was one of the concerns I had for Brian, is it sturdy enough to support seven Lalevens, which all have like, you know, one or two figures in them. Well, in my case, it'd just be one. So um, that was my main concern. But the second thing then would be like that I could put vehicles in them. So basically, the mod bases coming are going to be for the 89 Jazz Inc. and for the Tumblr. Now, if they arrived today, the Tumblr would be put in one and then the other would be empty. But to answer your question, would I put the Troopers in the meantime? I would. But long term, I don't see these guys going in a mod case of their own. Okay, so we'll go through really quickly. You have the Assault tank commander there I gravitate towards the more muted colors that's why ketchup and mustard or the artillery trooper and the incinerator were sold <clears throat> um, just love the look at the shore trooper the way they're kind of, kind of 
kind of muted colors, not kind of really bright colors, and kind of chipped away and weathered. And then of course you have the opposite kind, like the Death Troopers, although it's dark, it's kind of glossy. Cody and the uh, clone pilot here, the only two prequel figures I have. Just could not pass them up. Actually gonna re need to repose that, um, that clone pilot. I wanna swap out the helmet and pose him maybe holding the rifle and uh, maybe the gun on the other hand. I really like the inclusion of the binoculars though. I think that's a nice touch. So this here, this is the original short trooper that was going for a thousand. And ridiculous money, well, maybe not a thousand. I know it was up to $800 on eBay at one stage, but then this one came out and caused the value to tank. And that's actually where I bought when I bought this one because it was cheaper. Uh, very, very forgettable kind of a trooper here, but still looks cool, the, uh, the transport trooper. Remnant trooper. Again, I love the original TK Troopers, my favorite design, so naturally I would love the uh, chipped up and beat up Remnant Trooper. What I like about this is the, the inclusion of this in those early Mandalorian episodes told us everything we needed to know about what, what was happening. We knew it was um, a, a post-Return of the Jedi time. We knew that the Empire was still there, but they... They were just, there was, like literally as the name suggests, remnants of the Empire. That their funding wasn't great, because obviously they weren't repairing their their equipment as much or their armor. And I just thought it was a very simple way of showing us something without telling us. I just think it's a cool looking trooper. And then of course the Shori in the back. And then of course the, uh, the, uh, the my channel logo, this guy, Blast and Grogu. So he's very important to me. And also, if I have, this armor for the 501st and if I buy one of these on Etsy and get myself an e, uh, E22 which is my favorite blaster in the Star Wars universe currently then I could recreate that as well which would be quite cool. Right so that's the second last stage. It's gonna take a little bit break before we uh, go into the last last stage. <clears throat> Let me flip this around. Some questions for you Shane I think. Highlighted. Thanks for holding down the fort. I'll swap back into the decent mic. Okay. Uh, oh, that's just a random note, but um, I've been paying attention for the last few months, <clears throat> and I have uh, new material for um, <clears throat> shit collector say episode seven. Oh. So. That should I've be been wondering general. when when we would get the next one of that. Uh, listen, it's research, research. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's been there's been a few things jotted down. So that should be uh, see for the the, days. the people that have joined recently. Explain what what shit collectors say is all about, Shane. Shit collectors say is. The phrases we all use. I think originally, um, I, two things. I think originally, some people in the community saw it as a dig, or and that's definitely not what it was. These are phrases that we're all guilty of saying. Some of them are all of them. Um, so these little like small videos that are a minute or two long, they're skits, just highlighting some of the stuff that we say, like um, dopo, or um, telling telling your significant daughter oh no I've always had that one <laughs> or no I've, I've won that in a competition or um, uh, things like um, oh what do you think of the sideshow queue system I think it's great because you got it <laughs> do you know what do you think of the sideshow queue system oh it's awful did you get it no that's why do you know so it's it, like it's just these little things that like we, we all some of us uh, would definitely uh, say it so yeah they're arriving so I, is the distard comments you want me to yeah, I've checked the private chat. There's a couple of things as well. Just have a look. Yeah, no worries. But while Shane's looking at that, the what shit collectors say, there's some really funny videos. Um, go back and watch yeah. them if you've not seen them. Really funny. Okay, so I'll have a look at this. Um, uh, yeah, the... Um, the oh yeah, Robocop's actually downstairs in the um, the IKEA Mills bowl. 
so I, I, I've actually put a short up with that recently so I won't actually be doing that now um, but that 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 that's where that that is uh, uh, Costa um, he's sold all his Robocop said I'm done with movies for dorks <laughs> exactly that's what happened the bottom shelf figures are gonna get jealous and knock the troopers off the window with their remote control car quite possible quite possible um, Grail and Rare Joker I presume he was talking about the DX08 there but yeah, yeah. it's true true um, focus not it's not a criticism but a sincere question looks like the TV stand you just showed us isn't flush at the top do bleedings have a just for feet okay that is a great question and that melts my brain a bit because um, that company Vita XL the quality the build quality of it and I follow the directions to the T it comes in four parts and the, you when you make them like you know I followed the instructions to the T and everything like that and it just still seemed a bit like when I put them next to each other that they weren't entirely because it's four separate parts I don't like that and that was one of the reasons I want to get the module cases so that it'll be two units they'll be a lot more solid and I can just connect them together. I'm not going to have like four parts that could potentially be like slightly higher or lower. Um, so the modification should take care of that because they're they're heavier, they're better build quality, and there's only two parts, two bigger parts. It should be even weight way down the carpet here better than the four light woods. So um, that's one part of that. Do the bleedings have adjustable feet? <coughs> they do. They do, yeah. But ideally, um, you know, the, the the floor here is level. When I get those uh, the two module cases and replace the riser here with the, with the module cases, I shouldn't even have to use the levers. They should be all like screwed in. But yeah, they do. They do have adjustable feet. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you should exchange your floating shells with hanging cases. I think maybe the I, yeah I can see the logic in that I can definitely see the logic in that but I think possibly see I, I do one thing I do actually like the floating shelves I do like it because it gives me a different display mechanism what I mean by that is behind me it's kind of it's regimented it's like one figure per shelf I can't fit squ quarter scales in there um, I can't um, put like a speeder bike in there I can't. I don't not. Sure. I've measured that predator from prey, which I want, and I, you know, will get. But that will fit in, but just barely, and I might have to adjust the pose a bit. However, with the floating shelves, because there's no top cost there, because there's no like roof on it, I can just bang up two quarter scales on here, two big quarter scales, on top of their already big basin, because there's nothing above them. I have that option that. I can display play like that and that's what I like it gives me a completely different display option um, whereas with the cases it'll still have a roof on it and you know even if I made them bigger than the the Blilidans there'll still be a restriction there and I do like that also I think maybe <clears throat> the camera is making this room look bigger than it actually is because <laughs> it does I'm trying to think of having a case here I think it would become claustrophobic quite quickly um, but yeah, it's still an option though. It could, could be something I, I, I may do. I'll take a look at uh, Side So Q works. Everyone loves that Q when they get the figure. I, I've yet to, I'm in a great position because um, I know interested in, in Anakin Artisan. Don't collect prequels. I had no interest in the Joker artisan because they have the NF version. Uh, Scarlet Witch, I non-artisan, I'd have maybe a slight interest in. And then of course uh, Umbra, no, and what was the last one? Uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, no. So I've kind of dodged a lot of those bullets there. But there will come a time where they drop like a an artisan Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator. Terminator 2 or something I'll be like alright that looks incredible and uh, I will join the queue and if I don't get it 
I won't give out about it. I'll just do what Ian did and go right. Get onto some. I get onto Line Rock and go right. Can you get some of those artisan boys? Grand, happy days. Live the dream. You y'all forget the days when the site crashed when everyone. Yeah, and you're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. That was the um. <clears throat> well, that was the most recent example I can think of. Maybe you're not thinking about the same. Maybe you're thinking about an older one would be um. The stealth suit cap. Would that be right? Uh, floating shelves or floating cases be sure to anchor to stud or get extra supports listen that's why I bring in Ian here he's enough stud for everyone okay <laughs> and uh, Rita <laughs> thanks thanks for setting me up on that Brandon um, Rita we uh, met Rita here in um, we met my mine doesn't do that anymore because I'm using my my phone oh hey so it only does it with the no it's not doing that stuff anymore you're not doing that to jeez damn it anyway do it? Just... <clears throat> oh, yeah. this was ian a prodigy prodigy uh concert 20 years ago <laughs> hello gents this is rita uh thanks very much you got a few minutes away from the family this weekend and tune into your show hope all is well and i enjoy seeing your collection i do appreciate that thanks very much uh rita I hope you're enjoying your time with your family. And he, she's giving you compliments on the Duran Duran. The Duran Duran t-shirt. It's, it's a popular t-shirt. It's a very popular t-shirt. Yeah. Good stuff. Ian Philly. is the one. And now he's, Correct. he's Neo. Correct. He's Neo. I am the one. Yeah. He's Neo. The one and only. <laughs> um, Yeah. So I think so. we've done the... You're about to say something, yeah? Yeah. It was a bit, the one and only. That was a cheesy song from... A British artist called Chesney Hawks. Can you remember that? that I am the one. And the one. one yeah. yeah. My Only nephew. Was song and key. <laughs> see, when I was young, my nephew called me Uncle Chesney because I actually had long black hair. Right. It was a bit. Yeah. Anyway. Those so pictures your, will not be revealed. Your, your grunge days. Yeah. Yeah. I. 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 I I want to see those photos. That's going to be thing. Right? <laughs> thing. We must. We're, we're going to have a forfeit. Um, yeah, we're some sort of forfeit. Um, I think I'm going to do the last stage in this, which is the floating shelf display. Um, and then, yeah, that'll be it then. So, yeah, I'm going to switch back. So, all right. Okay. So, so the mic. And if you have any questions, if anyone in the chat has any questions or want me to show them something again or whatever, um, just let us know. Okay, so we get this and you turn on the lights for this one. All right. Let's give you an overview. Push that mic down. And I'm gonna turn, this is what the cable management looks like, brutal. Just turn that off. Okay. So this is say from the door. So just uh, some of the artwork there. This here. This is a tackle box. I'll actually show you this. So let's say if I. That's uh, the accessories for figures I tend to repose regularly. Um, most of uh, the figures that I'm like, no, I have the accessories I want. I just. Uh, put the art boxes up in the attic but then if there's a figure that I tend to repose a lot that has a lot of accessories uh, I'll give you a good example so there are all the mark 47 accessories that I'm not using but it's just easy access easy repose um, that's all these are some of the inner joker stuff I think the inner joker is actually two no that's a cap shield and then that's the mark 3 2.0 it's very very handy yeah, so a bunch of different spaces there. This is actually, this is an interesting one. So this here, this is the trooper helmet that I use for trooping. So in 1976, a British company called Shepherd and Studios were contracted to make the molds and armors for the, uh, obviously 1977 Star Wars New Hope uh, Stormtroopers. And they still have the rights to the molds and you can still go on and buy them. So that's what I have and that's what I've done. Um, that's just the helmet I wear during trip. Okay, so I've commented on these before, so I'm not going to comment again. 
This is a this piece of art. I can't remember the artist's name. I think it's Tyler, Tyler something. Oh God, someone in the chat helped me out. Absolutely stunning piece of art. Just an artist's interpretation of like a Terminator 1. And there's so much going on, so much details. You got the endoskeletons, you got Kylo Reese, you got Sarah Connor, you got the police cars and him there with the trench coat in the front. In the front. Uh, you got some of the punks from the start. Bill Paxton, I think, was one of those punks. Would that be right, uh, Ian? Start of Terminator 1? Pretty sure Bill Paxton was there. Um, yeah. Tim Neal. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was. You're right. He was. Yep. Yep. Game over, man. This is uh, A New Hope. Just a nice piece of artwork there. I picked up at Dublin Comic Con. Very simple. So then, these are the floating shelves. I actually reposed this cap recently because I've done very little with them and I'm absolutely loving it now. Like, I always knew it's a good figure. It is the cap to have, in my opinion. I know a lot of people like the stealth suit. I actually prefer the end game version. And I had him in a very, very basic pose with the um, the unbattle damaged regular shield. And I just reposed it with this, put him in kind of like a walking pose and just adjusted it ever so slightly. And it's just, I'm absolutely loving it now. So again, just going back to, if you look at these, like that, that Iron Patriot, wide stance, feet flat, and there's no stand, and then rockets on top from there. So this is the end game display. All these four floating shelves up to the canister. there. They're the end game display. So these two figures again, um, these are kind of more recent additions here. These were gifted to me by um, a friend in the community. And I don't know, I, I don't want to give them a shout out because, um, well, I don't want to give him a shout out because I'm not sure if he wants to be named, put it that way. But uh, I have to work out something with him because I can't be having that. Uh, these are just, they just look incredible as well. And it's nice to have a female representation. I think this is probably one of the better Black Widows from what I understand. Um, and I robbed that pose off. I think it was actually Justin I robbed that pose off. Justin or Jedi. I gotta say, the bow and arrow is one of the coolest accessories <laughs> to come on any figure. Um, this, is a, this is a pose that I actually quite proud of actually it's very relatively simple I just actually not coming through as well as I'd like in the camera here now but it's actually quite good in first person the battle damage 85 in-game Loki who yeah once you pose him with the helmet looks like Tom Hiddleston looks like Loki this base here was a base I was looking for for months and this was tracked down and given to me by none other than Ian, the stud, Agent Silverfox. Massively appreciated. And this is the base I mentioned earlier on, because that is where I want to put that um, modded Batman Begins on, because I saw Dean Knight pose his modded Batman Begins on it. And what was beautiful about this is, the base is wide enough that Batman Begins can stand on it, but it's narrow enough that the cape can drape over the left and right. And you kind of recreate that, um, the first night out look from Batman Begins when he's uh, strung up Falcone. And then of course... Hey yeah. Shane, <clears throat> yep. I think that base with Loki looks awesome. You might need another one. It <laughs> looks great. It does actually, doesn't it? And yeah. you know what I like about it is, I think if Loki was standing next to the Mark 85, wouldn't look as good the height difference makes it in the yeah. same way if you look like see this there's a slight height difference going on between the two of these i had to use the stand to get that pose with uh black widow but i i, I think something with a bit of a height difference it's kind of like using risers in a um, module case because i see that mario does that i think as well i think you do it as well there's some people some figures in the foreground are standing but yeah. then in the background there's a bit of a riser and it means you can see more of them it looks better I kind of I've kind of done a similar thing as well here with Rocket, you know. So it does look well, yeah. and thank you very much. That's Shane, nice question, shiny, shiny. Do you keep a check on your ambient temperature and humidity? 
he has a no, dehumidifier. No. I don't. And the reason I don't have to, Ireland never gets extremely cold. It gets cold in winter, it can get warm in summer, but it never gets extremely hot or it never gets extremely cold because of our, or is it long, longitude or latitude or position in the globe where it's a cool, temperate climate. Basically, the Atlantic keeps us cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter, so it doesn't fluctuate too much. So. I don't, we don't have issues with humidity really easy. It's never really damp or humid. It's not like, I've been to Florida before and it was like, you'd walk out the door and you're soaked like. Um, so no, I don't have that issue, so I don't have to monitor it. Uh, but I can understand if someone <clears throat> lives in more humid climate, they'd have to. Um, I actually really like how this figure looks at this angle. So this is the quarter scale QS19 Dark Knight. This is my favorite bat suit. Um, pretty much always will be, I think as well. And I love them all. I love Keaton's um, the version from the 89. I love Keaton 92. Even the Robert Pattinson version has grown on me. But And of course I love the Batman Begins. But I just love this because this is, for me, Nolan put Batman into, it was like he made the trilogy, he made the Batman movies that I always wanted to see as a kid. How would this actually work in a real world? I know it's not a real world, but it's close to possible. And I just love the look of this suit. So he's there. I have to say though, this figure though, the ankles are terrible on it. So this this literally needs a stand. I can get them to stand, it's just not worth the risk. Um, and even I pose it out of stand the vast majority of the time. And of course you have the quarter scale Mark III. I think I'd actually prefer the quarter scale Mark VI that comes out, but I won't keep two of them. But this is uh, beautiful as well. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. That's uh, just a quick final lap of honor here. So there's Terminator 2 artwork. So then, floating shelf, end game display, quarter scales, trooper display, and finally, I just one last look at them. So, see if we can get a better angle at this, but that's pretty much pretty much the collection tour. So I'll turn on this ring light again. Yes, yeah, so that should be okay. All right. Sorry folks, just want to turn this around again. Right, I'm back. Back in the deep, hopefully. Yeah, thank you, Ian, for holding on the fort there. I do appreciate it. <clears throat> mm -mm. I, right. I did show when you were videoing Shiny Shinies comment on the quarter scale, but I've started it again. Should talk about it because I'm curious, I don't have quarter scale. So, um, yeah, I'll have a look at the star comments there. So <clears throat> Um, obviously we have Mario giving a shout out to Rita, it's great to see. Um, Stanley saying, is it Ian's turn now? Do you have like a, are, are you able to to do similar now or would you prefer time to prep it and do it at a different time? Um, yeah, that, let's do it after I've done the new Tested kitchen out. and yeah. utility room because I'm stressed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no I'd, problem, no problem. You know, that's the grey hair. No problem. <laughs> um, so, the homework folder tour. I don't get that. I don't get that. Um, I don't know if maybe it was their folders. No, there was no folders in the room. I don't know. Uh, maybe he'll clarify. Uh, shiny, shiny. The next one, quarter scale are so underappreciated. I think so. But I can understand it as well. <coughs> I can understand it because um, they just take up more space, really. People, you'd have people saying, "Why would you go quarter scale when you could go quarter scale with statue?" Um, they're space huggers. The shipping is more expensive on them. They're more expensive to begin with. Uh, they're harder to sell. So I get it. I get it. Mm. I always envisioned they'd have three: one Marvel, one DC, and one Star Wars. So I have the DC, I have the Marvel. I th I nearly consider selling the Mark Three quarter scale and picking up the Mark Six, but I won't. I won't have two of them. 
um, and I think it would make sense because the DX19 style Batman is my favourite, so I have that in quarter skill. As Mark 3, I think I prefer, I prefer the Mark 6. Um, and then I you know one Star Wars one would be great if they did it. It'd be cool if they did like a Star Wars Ahsoka or something like that. But yeah, sure look. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, yeah, I, I do like them. I think they're, they're quite good. This is a good question, actually. It's a really good question. Oh my god, I didn't realize it was this. We've been going for like only two and a half hours. If you could have any one to one scale, what would it be? Well, your question, you have to answer first. <laughs> oh, don't do that. You can, no, you, you've got to answer it first. Okay, I'm not going to give the obvious answer of saying a one to one DX19. That's the obvious answer. I'm going to. I think it would have to be an Iron Man. I think a one to one. I think I think a one to one Mark Three would be awesome. One to one Mark Three, or a one to one Mark uh, Six. Um. Yeah, I think I'd probably go one to one armor of some sort. Yeah. What about yourself? Oh yeah. Listen. It on this side, the sensible was saying an Iron Man, maybe even a Spider Man, like the classic suit. Maybe. Mm-hmm. The devil side is saying Michelle Pfeiffer. That <laughs> woman. I knew that was coming. <coughs> now, serious question though: Would you get the the clean look when she first appears? when the outfit is like um, just brand new or would you get the torn up version when part of the blonde hair is coming out of the outfit what I would do is for the one to one scale I'd get the clean look and then when somebody releases the kind of battle damaged look I'd get that in six scale yeah. next to it it's, I wonder I think Mars Toys were on about doing various they, different calendars they showed that ages ago and then they've shown other things here's the thing everybody who's mentioned Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman and the whole chat blows up why yeah. is nobody doing this yeah wouldn't it be that'd be amazing like if Hot Toys just came out with you know tomorrow bang just out of absolute nowhere like because they are a very unpredictable company i can't see it happening but i think yeah. that your more realistic hope would be your your mars toys which i think yeah. they've mentioned it or i think i saw a render or something of it like yeah i agree it's more the outfit isn't it right it, that outfit cannot be play though yeah yeah you're right it would just peel the crap like peel the crap yeah so, anything else you, you want to add, or if there's any other questions in the chat, you can let us know before we wrap this up. Anything else you want well, to add uh, yourself, uh, Ian? No, so I, I'm, I'm laughing at uh, Rita's comment, a one-to-one scale or, or bust of Aquaman. I thought it was a <laughs> one-to-one scale, full scale of Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, is that, Rita, is that Jason Momoa or Aquaman? That'd be... And plus, Rita, you've you've met me and Shane in London. Why why are we not one to one scales? <laughs> uh, we're we're third party at best. <laughs> <laughs> Stories. Yeah, we're starry. We're Asmus, man. <laughs> yeah, yes, Momoa. Up, yes, Momoa. Yeah, uh, he's an absolute head for man, as we say in Ireland. He's a head for man. He's a big boy, um, but yeah, he just Duncan Idaho. Yeah, he was he was he was good and kind of as much as I wasn't a DCEU fan, I, I liked him. I liked him in the movies because there's definitely aspects yes. of the DCU you enjoyed. I liked him. He was very rock and roll. Yeah, I agree. He he was really good as these brilliant cast as Aquaman. Yeah, yeah he's very good at Duncan Idaho as well. Um, might be the last we've seen of him. I don't think so. Oh my god. I'm getting tired now. Half two in the morning. Did not think we, we, we'd go this late, but it was fun. 
Um, I'm glad that that worked out better, a lot better than I thought it would. I thought it was going to have a major technical difficulties and stuff, but I do appreciate it. We made it. I don't think I would have been able to do that on my own. No, I wouldn't have been able to do that on my own. So thanks very much uh, for uh, modding the chat and, 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 and communicating throughout the live stream, Ian. And thanks very much, obviously, to Mario with the uh, suggestions. Huge thank to anyone who has taken the time out of their evening or day or whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world, to watch the video, uh, watch the live stream and engage in the chat quite and very positively as well. I do appreciate that as well. So, um, yeah. Thanks, thanks a million. And uh, do you have anything you, you want to add or plug or anything before we wrap it up, uh, Ian? No, no, just sleep. And for all all the folks on our end of the world, remember, clocks go forward, or the clocks are now forward. So um, I'm going to just sleep through all of that. So uh, <laughs> I wake up when I wake up. Put it that way. Yeah, I, yeah I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's great. I'm not no work tomorrow. So happy days. Like, but um. Uh, thanks very much uh, for being here uh, shiny shiny so folks that's it um, again I've said it before and I will continue to say it thank you to anybody who's ever taken time out of their days to watch any of the videos like any of the videos subscribe to the channel become a channel member engage in the chat ask a question answer a question come on the live stream or invite me on their live stream so it's, it's a fun journey and hopefully onwards and upwards I think it's too early to be talking about 4K, but uh, you know we're at 3,000, I think 165 or something like that. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll try to take 3,000. I like to do things in quarters. 3,250 anyway. That's the next the next target anyway. So all right, folks, that's us done. <clears throat> and um, just in case you're struggling with your wallet, the Lord tells me he can get me out of this mess, but he's pretty sure you're fucked. <laughs> And in the words, in the words of Bill Paxton. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. See you, folks. We're out here. Hey. Good luck.